What is up, ladies and gentlemen? How are you all doing? It's Friday and it's time for the WAN show. At least an uh, hour and 20 minutes ago it was. Yeah. But that's okay because I was at Hoffman's doing one of our best Intel Extreme Tech upgrades yet. That's yes. right. Same $5,000 budget as everyone else. But Hoffman wasn't content to upgrade his PC. Hoffman wasn't content to get a new TV. Hoffman wasn't content to build a sick NAS and have like a sick studio monitor audio setup. Hoffman did all of those things. Oh. I haven't done the math, but I don't think it, it quite adds seem... up. <laughs> okay. And I think he might have stolen more gear from the office more brazenly oh, than anyone yet oh, wow. to this point. Yeah, I can never have an upgrade. Oh, because I'm going to find everything? I, I don't even I don't know. think you own anything that didn't come from the office. Yeah, probably not. We got a great show for you guys today. <laughs> Valve has partnered with iFixit to offer replacement parts for the Steam Deck. And get this, they did us one better and they're working on replacement parts for the Valve Index as yeah. well. Freaking A, ladies and Didn't gentlemen. In other news, Nintendo. Hey, the polar opposite. Nintendo shuts down the Wii U and 3DS eShops, cutting off the only legal option to purchase that library of games. Thanks, Nintendo. I sure won't have to resort to any kind of piracy or privateering or yeah you like the you like that ship right there it's got a little jolly roger on the top and everything we're gonna have some details about this a little bit later yeah. what else we got today uh in in continuing bad news microsoft will soon require a microsoft account and internet connection to set up windows 11 pro uh that's that's good that's that's good right also dr ian cutress dr cutress Leaves an end. Dr. Mega Transfers per second. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't Hi, know. Ian. It might might be good for Ian. Depends on where yeah, he's going. Yeah, depends on where he's What's going. going maybe maybe he's going to work at Burger King. Yeah. Do they have Burger King in the UK? I have no idea. Hey, respect to Burger King employees, by the way. I do love me a Whopper. Do you? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I haven't had one in a while. It's sort of a bad burger, but I can't remember the last time. Yeah, it's not that. I great. think it might have been literally when I was in high school. Uh We did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The show is brought to you by Corsair, how appropriate. Squarespace and Zoho CRM. I was saying before the show started, in, in, the, in the name of like what these shirts are talking about or representing, yes. you should have had like one or like three or something. One that or just three. have the Corsair logo instead of the pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Corsair wants to get drawn no, into our not. nonsense. Probably not. Um, love our friends at Corsair. And you know who we yeah. really love these days? Valve has been yeah. just on freaking fire lately. So this Absolutely. story comes from Valve's own blog. Uh, Steam Deck replacement parts. Look at this. We've got a freaking amazing x-ray really cool. image. I know. Isn't that stuff so cool? And if you watch the video as well, they, they go 360. They go all the way around um, the x-ray image, and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's absolutely awesome. love it. iFixit posted their teardown of the Steam Deck, so uh, Valve linked to that as well. Obviously, no one's going to do a better teardown of the Steam Deck than I fix it. That's great. Video. Freaking love it. But that's not the big news. Valve posts things in their blog all the time. Presumably, actually, I don't really follow the I Valve found it blog. kind of cool, actually, that they posted this in their blog with a 7 out of 10. Which, yep. Spoiler alert, the score that they got was 7 out of 10. Yep. Which is solid, especially for like a, a, a all encapsulated device. Yep. But it's not like perfect. Nope. And Valve still posted this whole thing and was like, yeah, we're proud of this. They're taking a oh, pretty cool. overall transparent approach to things. Yeah. Uh, but the big news, of course, is that Valve has committed to iFixit as one of the partners that they are going to be working through for Steam Deck replacement parts. And not just Steam Deck replacement cool. parts, but also, and this is something that I specifically brought up with Valve because I was extremely frustrated about something that happened with my personal index. Uh, also, 
Valve Index VR headset replacement parts. So here's the details. Uh, Valve is still hammering out the details. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Um, the main complaints that iFixit had were the difficulty in removing the battery and not having a modular charge port. Yeah. Most of the other parts are modular. Entry is relatively simil- uh, simple. There's a lot to like. And they are... Really, that's it. We don't have a ton of details. But what we can talk about at the very least is what this is like compared to the process that you would have to go through for something else. I mean, if you buy a handheld from Nintendo, you buy a controller from someone like a Sony or a Microsoft, if you're within warranty and you have some kind of problem, whether it's a failing battery on a PlayStation controller, less of a concern with Microsoft's controllers. I know that's a super polarizing issue, Microsoft's use of AA batteries in their Xbox controllers. For me, it's such a no-brainer because you could... You, you you can use your own rechargeable batteries. It doesn't yeah, have you to. You don't have to buy throwaways. You don't have to buy disposable There's batteries. Very good rechargeable Please batteries. Please stop buying disposable batteries. Anyway, that's a <laughs> whole whole separate conversation. So whatever it is that you buy, within your warranty period, if something goes wrong, in most cases, so so even though they will cover you, they will they will get you a new one. In most cases, as far as I can tell, there is little or no effort made to reclaim the the the, the oh, still working yeah. components yeah i mean i could be mistaken does microsoft sell refurbished controllers for example uh... or are these done through third parties xbox refurbished controller here we go best buy best buy has xbox yeah, i was gonna say refurbished I, I feel like i've seen that before but this is geek squad certified so what does that oh, even mean that sounds like a return yeah. Walmart also has refurbished controllers. But from where? Where do these refurbished controllers come from? It says the It says the brand is Microsoft. Okay, that doesn't Walmart. necessarily help us that much. Yeah, not 100%. Destroyer Samuel says I think they do. So that's great. As long as it's within warranty, you're covered. Fantastic. But what if there was a way for even if you were outside of warranty, to replace that controller or the component of that controller that was failed without actually discarding the whole thing or or sending it away to be refurbished? What if it was something that could be serviced on your own? You haven't taken apart a Steam Deck yet. No, but I have watched the whole iFixit video. I can tell you, having having done it, it's as easy as they make it look, if not actually more so. And there is, there is they do point out, like like replacing that battery would make me cringe and not from like the modern interpretation of cringe but it would make me cringe because i'd be very concerned about like breaking the screen and stuff because the amount of pressure they have yeah the battery something. the battery replacement the battery is replacement is good. rough they need but, to improve that uh we we said we don't have a lot of details that's probably because to be honest you should go watch the ifixit video it's fantastic um but the, the the fact that you can individually replace the thumbsticks the fact that you can individually replace so many different things it's it's really nice like the the I understand why they lost points and what they lost points for makes sense. But the things that they gained points on were really strong. Yeah. Like it wasn't like, oh, okay, they sort of, they got that checkbox. So they get that point. Like it was very, very good in each one of those categories. Uh, and I think they should get credit for that. Okay. Hey, thanks very much. Float plane chat. Um, Microsoft uses refurb controllers for warranty replacements. And okay. it was pointed out that Microsoft's controller warranty is actually only 90 days, making it basically worthless. <laughs> How is that even legal? That's pretty brutal. A 90-day warranty on like a $70 product? Sorry, I'm, I'm speaking in Canadian rubles here. I think they were closer to 50 or something like that. Yeah. That's brutal. That is really brutal. I don't, I don't like it. I'm surprised it's not a one-year minimum. So... I want to tell my story about what happened with the index because it was actually a pretty similar situation to what someone might find themselves in with the Steam Deck. I have no idea what happened, and this is sort of unique to VR because I was in VR and everything was fine, and I came out of VR and one of my thumbstick tops was missing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did it fall off on its own? Maybe. <laughs> Did I knock it off while flailing, flailing around, around playing beat saber yeah probably not but maybe but maybe <laughs> <laughs> but what was frustrating for me about it was that a i was out of warranty 
which I was fine with. Yeah. This is like, I, I feel like this narrative is going to get turned around on me somehow. Like I've just, that happens. I, yeah. I've had a, I've had a fantastic, yeah. I've had a fantastic <laughs> streak lately of <laughs> saying things and then replying to posts where people are absolutely outraged that I would say a thing I completely didn't say, yeah. which is awesome. Always the most fun. Primo. Um, Cause it's kind of like what happened with the iMac. I was outraged that Apple wouldn't fix it. <coughs> Not because I wasn't willing to pay for it. I was yeah. outraged because it's your product and you're not providing me replacement parts, so you better be able to fix it. That just seems very straightforward and to me. And you guys were happy to pay, like, Apple fees yeah. to fix it. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we, it was expected to be expensive. They said... They just wanted to fix it. They said, no, yeah. we will not fix it. Them saying no is the Bye -bye. problem, not there being a price. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was the iMac Pro... And there was literally nothing professional about the experience of Oof. getting that product serviced. Oof. So um, so anyway, my warranty was up. So I was a little choked about that. I contacted Valve Support. And honestly, my whole experience with the Index has been terrible. A, it wasn't available in my country. So I had to find someone in the US to buy it and ship it to me, which then caused problems when I had not one, but two components fail. Th three? Have I gone through this two or three times? I can't, I can't remember. The point is, I've had to go through Valve Support. Every single time I contact Valve Support about this stupid thing, they're like, we are very confused as to why you have this thing. Uh, it doesn't appear to be under the right account. I'm like, okay. you're in the support ticket system, right? So I, why don't you just spend four seconds looking at if I've ever contacted support about this? I have, if you, if you, uh, it, rather than me typing up this long explanation of us going through this whole song and dance again, because the first time I contacted them, it was like two day response times every time. Like it was really slow and we had to go back and forth like four times. I was like, guys, oh, it's base stations. I had, I had base stations fail a couple times. Like, okay, guys, I would like to use my VR headset. I, I don't even, like, I don't even, I don't even mind that they're, you know, we got to work through this stuff, but this thing had at the time this thing hasn't even been out for a year so does it have a one-year warranty okay then what's the question that's something that has always triggered me when you contact a company about a warranty replacement and they go oh well here's a bunch of paperwork to demonstrate that it's within its warranty period and you go this product launched 46 days ago unless i have a time machine or my name is marquez brownlee I haven't had it for a year. Okay? Why would it, is that a reference? It's it's a thing. It's a thing. He he, he opens so really many early. of his videos with so I've been using this for whatever okay. and it's like kind of a meme in the community. Sure, yeah, anyway, yeah, the, yeah, okay. The, the the point is my my experience with Valve support has been overall positive but imperfect. So I contacted them about this controller. I'm like proactively. I'm like, "Hey, can we just not do that whole thing this time?" I don't even want a warranty replacement. I, I, I think I'm outside of warranty. It doesn't matter. The thing is not overall broken. My thumbstick just got disappeared. I would just like a new one of those. And they were just like, mm, no. as a show of good faith, we will cover it for you under warranty. But um, this is your last one, by the way. I think I think they mentioned that. Don't quote me on that one. Uh, but they, I could tell there was some there was some hesitation about covering it under warranty, which is well, fine because it was out of warranty. I didn't expect them to do it at all. I expected to repair it myself. And then they were like, "And we don't do that. We have no way of doing that." And I was really disappointed at the time because it was less about that I wanted the replacement. They I could just a buy a new one. controller, didn't they? Yeah. So yeah. they swapped a whole new controller out for it. And that wasn't the solution I wanted. I, I actually was like kind of looking forward to ripping it apart and, and replacing it. And quite frankly, I expect that to be much more difficult than something like the Steam Deck because of all of the sensors. Oh, yeah. Just like covering the outside of the index controllers like it was going to be what are they called knuckles controllers i think is like the the, the cool name for them I, I expected it to be an absolute nightmare but i i don't know i kind of wanted to tackle it anyway i thought it might be fun and they just had absolutely no way to deal with that whatsoever uh J oh no Jaden, one of our float plane devs is like i am presently in customer support hell for my index that came with a broken speaker i'm so sorry to hear oh. that you're that your VR headset that you will not be able to beat me at Beat Saber with is not working properly. 
That's a real shame, Jaden. Is this challenge version two? No, 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 no. There's no challenge. I Jaden came in, schooled me on my own headset. And that's honestly a big part of what got me like heavy into Beat Saber. <laughs> because you don't set the high score on somebody else's gaming device. <laughs> well, you Okay, would. it's rude. You would. I totally would. Yeah. But it's rude. <laughs> it's just, I'm just saying, it's a rude thing to do, all right? Um... <laughs> Hey, Jaden, look, at least yours isn't a U.S. unit, and you have to explain why your name in your profile says Linus Sebastian, but the name on the invoice says John Martin. So John John <laughs> arranged it for me. I was makes like, sense. I, I could tell you were going to say the person's name, and I was like, hold on. I was like, okay. Yeah, no, no, it's all, yeah. it's all, it's all good. What I was like, look, John, you know, we facilitated your relocation. Can you do me a solid and use your special Murica powers to obtain an index and ship it to me? He's like, don't worry, I got you, bro. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, what am I even supposed to be talking about right now? Right. We're talking so this about is stuff. great. Yeah. So they've gone from me being extremely disappointed because I wanted to be able to repair my own my own valve crap to working with partners to provide these parts. And working with partners is actually such a good way to do this because something that I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize if they haven't worked in distribution or warehousing or retail is how complicated it can be when you've got something that doesn't fit into your regular workflow. At NCIX, I wanted to bring in water cooling. And at that time, the only shops that carried water cooling stuff were really boutique. I'm talking like ADP mods. I'm talking frozen CPU. Yeah. Like those, those old school water cooling first, everything else later kinds of shops. Petra's tech shop, okay? Like those kinds of shops. And for them, the concept of having an entire spool of tubing and just measuring it according to whatever it said on the invoice and then packing it into the box was no problem. But here's what you guys probably don't realize if you've never worked like in a warehouse before is that you can't count on every single person in the warehouse to have the same level of like game sense and capability. If NCIX, okay, if NCIX had had a by the foot method of buying tubing, because that's what I wanted to do, because I was like, well, obviously they should just pick how much tubing they want, and then they should get exactly that amount. <laughs> and my boss basically sits me down, he goes, look, if it's, it's on the invoice, tubing per foot times six, Half the time, they're going to end up with six, six one-foot chunks of freaking tubing. <laughs> and the other half the time, they're going to end up with six whole spools. <laughs> and we're going to end up with like a $600 shipping bill. <laughs> and I'm like, right. <laughs> so that's actually, that's actually one of my like proudest innovations in it, like it's it's one of those hilarious things that nobody would ever know if i didn't bring it up but i am the driving force behind why water cooling tubing comes prepackaged in the, 10 foot length the 10 foot box that's the you. 10 foot box that's me i because because our warehouse could not be trusted <laughs> to measure a length of tubing and put it in a box and because to my knowledge we were the first component first water cooling second retailer to actually sort of try to ship any kind of volume of this stuff i pushed back on every single supplier and, I, and so swift tech would actually pre-cut the 10 foot things for us and they were just wrapped in like like kitchen cling wrap like that. saran wrap yeah, yeah exactly yeah. right because they didn't have a system for it they were like this is the stupidest thing ever <laughs> it comes in bulk from tygon or like uh clear flex or whatever uh, why, why would anyone why would anyone want to have like two feet of extra tubing left over after they finish their build this is so dumb and i was like look if you guys can't figure this out, either I'm going to have to stand in the back of the warehouse 
I've got this, these things to wrap them up and I can't. I have other things to do. Or your warehouse is going to have to do it because I trust you to be half burn, halfway near competent. And then my warehouse can just have one thing with one label to put in the box and ship. So that that is my, my innovation. Because I, I remember the transition of like... Stupid problems need stupid solutions. Needing to buy from frozen CPU. Yeah. And then being able to get it from NCX, but it was like saran wrapped. <laughs> yeah. And then being able to get it from NCX and it was in those like black boxes. I don't even remember who uh that would have been Primo Chill, I think Primo was Chill? the first one to have black like boxes, really nice pre done. Like, often like a little thing of colorant or whatever. Yeah, uh, it was like a pre prep thing that they sure. put in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, wait. There was someone that we did dyes with. I can't remember. It might have been Primo Chill. I actually, I, I don't quote I think me on it. Was it the second you said Primo Chill, I remember their name on the box. I think that was right. Yeah, it might have been. It, they might have had both options. It might have been Primo Chill. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the whole story. And the rest is basically history. <laughs> um, so that was, that's pretty funny, actually. That's the whole start of it. And, it's it's, that, and that's interesting insight because before the show, yeah. Um, we we stopped talking about it because we were like save it for the show but i was wondering I was, I was thinking i was like they're they're clearly shipping hardware like it's not a company that has not shipped hardware before why don't they do the sub components there's probably a reason but i don't know and that's it and that makes sense that's exactly it when your eye fix it there is a certain level of aptitude that you're going to be expected to have and they're just you will used be to it. you will be expected to recognize Oh, no, this is completely the wrong joystick assembly. How did this end up in, in the wrong bin? Let me put that away. This is the right... Like, you will be expected to have that degree of knowledge. Valve can't necessarily expect that. This is that. a gigantic box that says index on it. Blanc. Exactly. This is a decently sized box that says... One uh, barcode, deck on it. one line item on the invoice. Yeah. It has to be that simple when you're operating at scale. So that's why you need to build partnerships with smaller more boutique distributors when you want to do something like this so i understand why it didn't happen overnight and massive respect to valve for figuring it out getting it done i'm so excited and i have another thing to tell you guys i'm really excited about here yeah and that is that the privateer shirt is live there's yes. a lot of really cool stuff to go over with this particular shirt yeah. first and foremost is that this is the first design in our new colored, our own branded t-shirts. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are no longer simply printing on American apparel shirts. These have been probably about two years in the making. Does that sound about right, Nick? Yeah, basically. Basically two years in the freaking making. Uh, we went through, oh my God, uh, over 10, well, probably over 20 different suppliers, all told, trying to, trying to get this nailed down. At least round, yeah. At, at least that. Yeah. It was not freaking simple to get a basic high quality t shirt. Like, why is it this hard? Well, because you're the customer. <laughs> okay. I'm a difficult customer. I will grant you that. But that means I. They're good. It, they are good. I wasn't willing to settle for almost as good as what we had. We were only going to be able to start doing our own blanks if they were as good or better. And the skin feel is absolutely freaking fantastic. I think the fit is great. The fabric hang, just the, like the way it hangs, I think is absolutely awesome. And this is our first design on it. Sarah did this. Actually, if you're subscribing to On Float Plane, there's a VOD of it. Sarah did a four hour stream. Uh, did you know? Do you know about this? Yeah. Yeah. So Sarah did a design stream where she really went into her creative process, how she how she goes start to finish, how it goes when she creates a design. So she worked on this whole thing with her. We had her her drawing tablet like captured. Was she using an iPad? I think for this one. Yeah. Uh, so that was really cool. And then finally, we've got colors. We've launched the first colored shirt on the store in. Since Constellations? Yeah, like three years. And, because the problem is that aside... Okay, honestly, I never would have needed to switch away from American Apparel if they had managed to keep their distribution in order. But we couldn't get consistent... Uh, there is another issue. I do know about no, that no, no. one. I was just going to jump in. Yeah. So, you're, you're not on mic if you don't okay. come a little closer, we, though. We placed an order for black shirts yeah. in August? And I'm still waiting on like 2,000 of them to show up now. Yeah. Like it's it's bad. 
Yeah, and that's yeah. black shirts. That's black shirts. So we've had to stalk. Like, I remember Nick and I having a conversation where he goes, this is a lot of money. Um, <laughs> and I know it's really stupid for us to essentially be a t-shirt warehouse, but we have to order in this volume because the supply is so inconsistent that if we don't, we will be a t-shirt store with no t-shirts, which is essentially what American Apparel is at this so point. The, the nice thing is with these t-shirts, it's only going to take like three months to get a restock, even though we're literally shipping them from like China. So yeah. yeah. And, and because we're dyeing our own raw fabric, we can get them in any color we want. We, they don't have to all be black. Like, oh man, it didn't even matter how far ahead we ordered any color other than black. It was just, it was a joke. Like it was an absolute freaking joke. So we're oh. launching our first colored shirts and we're, we're going big or going home here, ladies and gentlemen, because there's we've a, got- There's a question in the full plane chat. Six different colors. Uh, that I kind of want Nick here for, just yes. in case he has any insight. Um, it says, so the shirts aren't American Apparel anymore. I love how your American Apparel shirts fit. Personally, disconnected from the store, I don't talk about any of this stuff ever. I can't really tell a difference in terms of fit. Mission accomplished. That it was exactly the goal. Yeah. Because consistency okay. is, <laughs> your hand doesn't fit in it at all. Not even slightly. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> consistency is like, honestly, 80% of the battle. We wouldn't have, we actually had a lot of internal debate around different, uh, different materials. Uh, there was there was a lot of push internally for like a bamboo based fabric. Um, there was a lot of push internally for uh, playing around with the cotton poly blend. Uh, the blend that American Apparel uses, it turns out is extremely unusual. It's a 50-50. And what's way more common is a 60-40 or a 70-30 blend. 60-40 uh, is the big one though. And so if there were cases where we would go to fabric fabric wholesalers and they'd be like 50 50 what's that no we we literally cannot create it and we're sitting here going well do you make fabrics or not <laughs> isn't that your entire job to make fabrics um i forget where i was going with this story but it's like ridiculous so anyway so because because it was so important to me that the feel be consistent because people Different love our shirts sure. like have you seen the reviews yeah. Of any design of shirt. Yeah. There will be comments about the design, but a lot of it is just like, especially on like mystery shirt. Some people get upset because they get like three of the same one. They order like three mystery shirts and they get like all the same one. We've mostly resolved that, by the way, guys. We actually go out of our way to print like old out of print designs sometimes so that mystery shirt will just have like kind of fun random stuff That's in it. That's cool. Um, and if you get more than one, reach out to support. If you get more than one of the same one, yeah, reach out to support. We'll get you sorted out. So this is a 6040. Uh, this is a 6040. Yes. Oh, I didn't even actually realize that. So this is a 60-40, but it feels basically the same. So the point was we needed to find something that had the same feel because people love the shirts and we didn't want to put ourselves in a situation where people are going to go, man, these guys' shirts used to be really nice. Yeah, yeah. How much would that suck? Yeah. I, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> so it's launched. It's launched. It's out there. The privateer shirt will be your first. <laughs> what is this face you're making? <laughs> oh my goodness. This will be your first opportunity to try our own label shirts. There was actually one other reason for us to do this, and it had to do with uh, getting our trademark application sorted out. So if we didn't have our own label on the garment, it was going to affect our ability to get our LTT or LTT store or whatever the trademark application was through because there's a big difference between printing your logo on someone else's garment versus having your own garment with your own labeling and your own yeah. um your own your own care tag your own like not you know product makeup stuff anyway so pretty cool so i <laughs> It's in your eye. <laughs> oh man! So for mine, I was shooting with a prime. You need to, and I have a hard time not laughing. It's funny. <laughs> so half of these things, half of these shots, I'm pretty sure I'm like literally mid laughing because he would tell me like I'd be trying to make an angry face and I'd feel like I'd be doing an okay job and he'd be like, look constipated. <laughs> and I would just burst out laughing. So good. 
two eye patches. <laughs> the world's unluckiest I, again, pirate. I have no clue what's happening with my left hand in that photo. Yeah. I don't remember doing that. I feel like I was going to like do something else, and he just took the photo. But. I mean, you clearly couldn't see what you were doing, so true. there's that. True. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was my fun, though. my favorite for me is definitely this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's good. That one's really good. I was I was talking to him about it because that stupid gun had like an orange, you know, this is definitely a toy tip on it. Man, when we were kids, like toy guns were still cool. They didn't have to have like, and it's not just an orange tip. It's like this big around. Like it has like an orange plunger on the end of it. It's so dumb. It's anyway, I was like, hey, can you Photoshop that off? And can you actually give me like a, like a muzzle blast on it? And he's like, mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we also launched the oh that's right this isn't the only launch the, the women's stuff, i forgot right? about that home so our first ladies garment yeah. is finally here i'm sorry for everyone who was excited for the underwear it's not the underwear yet that is coming but our first ladies garment to sir is gonna be this the women's cropped sweatshirt and the women's high-waisted sweatpants. So we asked the ladies in the office to model this up for us. Got Yvonne, Nicole. Oh, that's so cool. They all coordinated to go be on set together. That's awesome. Oh, and hey, how does the um how does the how does the mouse over thing work where you can Sorry, we didn't have time to put it on this one. It's on everything else. Oh, that's not on this one yet. For the stuff for today. Okay, so the stuff for today doesn't have it, but every other item on the store says the size the model is wearing now. So it'll give you a better idea of uh, whether you can expect it to fit or not. Oh, this is so fun. Look at these guys in their matching. Actually, you guys probably don't know some of these people. So Sarah, obviously. And then we've got Nicole, and then that's Emily, uh, who's one of our editors. There you go. Um... Did did uh, did my picture where I ambushed Yvonne end up in here? Yep, it's there. There's just a million photos, so it's yeah. hard to find. It. <laughs> I, was, I snuck up on her. She didn't know I was coming. That one's funny. I like that. Uh, she's wearing the black one. Anyway, so yeah, we've got the women's cropped sweatshirt, and we've got the uh, ba -da -ba -ba, high waisted sweatpants. There they are. Do 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 do. And then if you go to Swack it, you can see them also. Sure, I'll show you the Swack it yeah. thing. Is there logos on the women's clothes? I don't think there's anything on these. Also, the rose color on the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to. Today was a little crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. today was yeah. a little hectic. I think power went out. I think stuff. this had like forty images or something like that. I mean, we never go, we never go easy on the images. No. <laughs> so, yeah, that sometimes it takes some time, and there was a power outage today, so that was pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> anyway, there it is. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, Nick insists. Nick insists that I show you guys. It's cool. Insists that I show you guys the sizing thing. It is very cool. So model size, model line is size medium. So as you go through, you can see who is it. What's oh shoot yeah sorry. Uh, who is it? What size are they wearing? And then we're I think working on a feature where you're going to be able to see other LTT items that are also pictured. No ETA on that. But yeah. That's, so that's a lot fine. of the time when I'm modeling a new shirt, I'll also be wearing a toque. Yeah. So if you're able to be like, oh yeah, here's all the things that are in here. So there's Anthony with our triple XL. So this is this is going to be really great because it's a lot easier to kind of put yourself into like, oh, I'm more of a ploof or I'm like more of an Anthony body type. How do I want it to fit on me? And kind of looking at how, how it hangs on them and, and imagining that for yourself. I mean, we're going to obviously continue to revise this, keep, keep trying to do better, um, keep adding more variety. But that's kind of the update for today. Pretty exciting freaking day. I'm, I'm super stoked. Yeah, bunch of stuff. Heck yeah. Thanks, Nick. Um, Toby G asked, Bye. can you put the model's height as well? I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll get you guys more detail as time goes on. Obviously, with in some cases, we don't want to get too granular. I think we're not going to get to the point where we're like, yeah, here's everyone's measurements and height and weight and, you know, shoe size and blood type. Like, I don't think we're going to get that detailed, but we Once just want to... the underwear, that'll get really interesting. Yeah, we just <laughs> we want to get you guys as much detail as we can. Oh. All right? All Thanks, right. Guys, cool. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Uh, will there be more designs coming down the line in that particular color combo, asks WD Stevens. I have no idea. 
I, I, I quite frankly don't know. Like this one? Uh, really liked the aqua yellow color combo that you're wearing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. My favorite two are the pink and um, pink and aqua, I guess, and the and the purple. I actually really liked the green one. I really like, but A Prime said I should wear this one, and I don't. I like this one. I just I really like the the dark green one. Yeah. Oh, the olive. Olive. This is this is olive, Luke. Okay. Olive drab. Sarah's my. Uh, I just like the idea of a pirate shirt being an olive drab. With a accents. privateer shirt. Privateer. Yes. Let's get the words right. Yes, it's very important that there's a distinction there. The word matters Extremely a lot. Extremely important. Okay. It's a yeah. big deal. Yeah. All right. Why don't we jump into our next topic? Oh, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Why don't we jump into our next topic here, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Nintendo pulls an opposite of Valve Ugh. and makes your old device worse instead of helping you make it better. Nice. No, I mean, there was dozens of us that owned Wii U's, so... Wanna want to talk? <laughs> like, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of upset. So one of the things that prompted me to ditch our Wii which was uh, the kids only cared about Wii games anyway, for a Wii U and do the migration thing. Because that was actually kind of cool in its own sort of Nintendo, very locked down kind of way. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I did the migration. It was cool because it was unique. From the Wii to the Wii U. Uh, one of the things that prompted me to do it was the shutting down of the Wii eShop. And I was like, oh, okay, I can't buy like retro games and or, or anything anymore so this thing is sort of deprecated so we gave it away and we switched over to the wii u and it's like oh great so now that's gone too like this sucks is the overhead of maintaining this really so high that it doesn't justify i really don't think so that it doesn't that you can't justify the occasional like if to be people fair, are buying this stuff I from time to time doubt i seriously doubt there's almost nothing to any do amount it. of people buying that type of stuff and i seriously doubt the overhead's very high at all i i really think they're just trying to get people on newer devices that are better at pushing things towards you that's that's my uh things are bad well talk us through it talk us through it so yeah eShops are shutting down wii u 3ds uh late march 2023 so you've still got a while the shutdown will remove access to the online libraries for both consoles where many games are still eShop exclusive uh some of the games that are going to be lost in regards to being able to purchase them legally um it, I mean, there's a long list. I don't think I need to go through all of this. Maybe pick some highlights for yeah, us? Yeah, some of them are kind of surprising. Like, there's a Phoenix Wright game. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. Um, Pushmo slash Crashmo slash Stretchmo, which I don't know what that is, but it's highlighted, so I'll go with it. Um, also, there's a Mario and Donkey Kong game. Mario and Donkey Kong Minis on the Move. I don't know what that is, but it's a Mario game, and it's no longer purchasable, which is surprising. Um, and a bunch of other kind of mostly smaller games but still um that you won't be able to access properly anymore that sucks all the all the like really big names all the really recognizable titles are accessible somewhere else um but some are getting locked and even if you purchased them or wanted to purchase them legally on the previous platform you won't be able to in 2023 so you have a while until then yeah, kind of brutal. Um, apparently, Nintendo started and then removed a preemptive and defensive Q&A, basically saying that uh, they don't have to justify anything to anyone and people are being unreasonable and should just buy Switch Online. Um, and any remakes <laughs> that make it into the... I'm sure they didn't word it that way. I think the person who wrote this is a little upset. Um, is it Anthony? It's Anthony. Yeah. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the person who wrote this is wrong, to be fair. Anthony. Um, we could just say Anthony at yeah, this point, I, I think. think he, he's wrong. out now. But 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 I think that was I think there was some some charge behind that. Um Anthony's take is that they they do make one good point. Switch Online is pretty good for finding titles you've never heard of by putting them next to titles that you have. Um, but it's a bit like saying hand in your old game cartridges and pay us to keep playing them, but not all of them. That is absolutely true. Um, that is what they're doing, and it's brutal. Uh, for that matter, 3DS and Wii U emulators are unlikely to join Switch Online anytime soon. Uh, very true. Uh, but yeah, they that are likely to be available elsewhere. Like the computer. Oops. Dang. Uh, <laughs> while online storefronts have always had this problem looming over them, absolutely. They will always yeah. be deprecated eventually if they are fixed to one console. Um 
the this one seems to have stirred the hornet's nest among fans. That's always going to happen with Nintendo fans. It's always going to happen with a console that has an install base of like over a hundred million units, like the 3DS, like the Wii U. Yeah, sure, fair enough. You could kind of go, ah, this thing doesn't really matter anymore and will never matter, except that it that it will. It's going to be this piece of gaming history that, in the same way that the Virtual Boy is create. Or sorry, what's the that was what's the I think it moved more units than Virtual Boy. That, yeah, yeah the, that's the, the red one. one. Yeah. No, I mean it moved more units than Virtual Boy, <laughs> but I just mean that Virtual Boy is sort of this this curiosity. It's so no matter how yeah. successful or unsuccessful something is, it's still going to be part of gaming history. Due to how they marketed it, I think for pretty much ever, people are going to look back at Nintendo's historical consoles and go like, "Wait, what? That was actually its own console?" Because so many people thought it was an yeah. add-on to the original Wii. And to not be able to go back and get content for it, like it just. Oh, it sucks. And it's just so unnecessary. This is a big part of the reason why I buy physical Switch games. That's the thing that makes me so mad. It, it It's not that it's a bad thing. It is a bad thing. But it's how unnecessary the bad thing is. Obviously, in the world, there are much bigger problems than some game marketplace not being available oh, for sure. a year from now. Yeah. And I've got a year to save my, to put quarters in my swear jar and save up to buy whatever it is that I'd like to buy and download it to my console. Part of, part of the problem is, though, it's just, a, and I know you're making a point, but yeah. part of the problem with that, though, is like it's, it's an old console. It's an old portable console. It's an old uh, home console, whichever one you have. It might break. You might still want to play that game. So you go buy another one and what? You can't Nothing. download it. Nothing, because Nintendo has this extraordinarily anti-consumer approach to game yeah. data. Yeah, I, it's still like honestly, if there were, if there was literally a single gamer in the entire United States Congress, there would be some kind of law against what Nintendo's doing, holding your save game data just hostage. And there's most. People seem kind of on my side, but I saw at least one comment go by talking about like, oh, they're not going to do that to Switch. They sold so many units. They did that to the Wii. Yeah. Do you know how many Wiis they sold? They sold so many units of the Wii. I think they're there are more Nintendo the Wiis than there are like actual Wiis on Earth. <laughs> Just kidding. There, there are a lot of penises on Earth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, World's full of dicks, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it'll happen to the Switch. And there, there's of course like, it will. I want to be able to go back and play the games that I paid for on the Switch. Yeah. And you know what sucks yeah. is that, again, back to good guy Valve, to be clear, not everything Valve does is right. Absolutely. Just want to make that abundantly extra super clear. Just all right. Also give them credit when they do things that are right. We have to give them credit when they do things that are right. Valve yeah. has come out and said, if we ever deprecate this platform, we will we will engineer a way that you'll just ha still have all your stuff. Like, I don't know what that would look like exactly, and I doubt even they know exactly what that would look like. Yeah, some type of peer-to-peer. -peer, some know. kind of, okay, download it before this day, and it goes it goes good old games, DRM-free. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly yeah. what that would look like. Yeah. And since they made that commitment, that commitment has gotten exponentially more complicated to actually follow through on. Oh, yeah. Especially now that they've got, you know, partner software like uh, Halo Infinite's a perfect example. I own Halo Infinite on Steam because I can't be arsed to deal with Microsoft's spectacularly broken launcher crap. I, Unfortunately, you still have to deal with their accounts and their uh, matchmaking and networking and all that jazz. Because of how intertwined they are, <laughs> the experience is terrible. <laughs> and this is with all the services still like running properly. Yeah. I'm afraid to know what that would look like when, you know, Valve doesn't exist anymore. And Valve not existing anymore is actually like kind of a scary proposition to me because aren't they privately held still? As far as my understanding goes, yeah. I believe they I believe they're privately held, but the the thing is that okay, no, I know they're privately held, but what I don't know is who the shareholders are. That I'm not sure, and I don't... Guys, feel free to let me know in the chat. This is just one of those things that I've been curious about, but never gone out of my way to look up. Because um, one of the things that I've done as part of owning a business is estate planning. If Yvonne and I get hit by a bus at the same time, do you know what happens to Linus Media Group? Uh, No. What would be your assumption? 
I if I remember correctly, because I think we talked about. No, this. no, no. Give me an assumption. Give me an uneducated assumption. Then. Okay. Okay. What would be your layperson's assumption? Honestly, if I didn't know some of the context that you guys had told me, I would just genuinely have no idea. Um, I would assume that it would go to uh, uh, like next of kin inheritance. Okay. And then I have no idea how that would work because your like offspring are too young. So the way that that would typically work is when your offspring are not of legal age yet, there would be some kind of like trustee. Trust. Yeah. 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 And and they would be but responsible. Like who would run the trust? Like there's a lot of things that I, I yeah. So they would be they would be part of them agreeing to be our trustee. I can't remember exactly what the term is. I think it's trustee, but part of them agreeing to be that would be that we would leave behind a letter of wishes for how we would want the company to be run or or whatever the case may be. But here's the problem. The way that inheritance laws work, and to be clear, there's a lot In of Canada. There's a lot of good things about this particular type of law. I'm not a huge fan of uh, of you know aristocracy, just intergenerational wealth that creates like a, a, a like a a lord class and a serf class. Like that's that that's not a period of history that we need to go back to, although there are strong arguments to be made that we are already there and have actually yeah. managed to zoom past it yeah. with the current level of wealth inequality in the world. But that's a separate conversation. It's beyond the scope of this one. So I'm not necessarily against inheritance taxes. The problem is that in the case of an asset like Linus Media Group Incorporated, bequeathing it to a successor is extraordinarily complicated. So instead of me being able to, to gift shares or, or leave the company to a next of kin, like uh, mine and Yvonne's children, what would happen is the asset would be placed um, like, like in, in escrow or in trust. It would be, it would be held by, by a neutral party. In, in, it would essentially have no owner for a period of time while they get it valued. So the company would have to get valued at that point. And then whoever we did leave it to would have to come up with the cash that they would need to pay the tax on that value of inheritance. And the problem with how companies are valued is that Linus Media, like they can have these just insane insane multipliers over EBITDA. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of EBITDA, but it's earnings before tax and uh, tax and uh, tax and I can't remember what the, the last one is. Blah, blah, blah. EBITDA. EBITDA. Here we go. Earnings before interest taxes and depreciation. Okay. So a company like ours that's in a growth phase in kind of a hot, trendy industry, online media, uh, could easily have a multiplier of a like 10x, even as high as 11, 12, 13x. Now, I got to be honest with you guys. We've only been running Linus Media Group for nine years. Could I possibly have that kind of cash on hand? If I'm anywhere near a sort of responsible business operator. He's trying to like reinvest in the company. and Because that inheritance tax is deep into double digits. Like you could end up paying like probably 30, 40% plus tax on this inheritance. So if we, if we take that, that value, let's say, let's say for the sake of argument that Linus Media Group makes a million dollars a year, okay? If we had a 10X, so let's go conservative. If we had a 10X multiplier in our valuation, that would be $10 million on which they could owe like $3 million, three or $4 million or something ridiculous like that. These are intentionally not exact numbers because this is Yvonne's department, not mine. She deals with this stuff. The point is just that it's really complicated and we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have 30% of 10 years of earnings sitting in the bank because that would be stupid. Yeah. So what would happen is the company would have to be sold to some soulless aggregator of media companies. And then my kids would obviously be fine because they'd get a big pile of cash, but 
everything, like everything about Linus Media Group, everything about the way we want to do things would immediately be dead. Gone. Because it would all be about getting back a return on this gigantic cash investment in acquiring this company. And so I forget why I started this conversation, but there's basically no way to, there's no way to leave the company to, right. If Valve, oh, if Valve yeah. is primarily owned still by Gabe Newell and family or co-founders. So I looked that up. And they get old and or die or are not interested anymore or whatever the case may be. Hopefully they have billions. Yeah, well, I think they probably do. What it's going to cost. Which is convenient. No, just, I mean, in the bank. Well, I think they do. So, yeah. So there's that. That's but. fair. Uh, so Newell owns more than 50%. The rest of it was buried in a Forbes article that honestly, I literally could not navigate through the ads because there's too many on the page. And Hilarious. And bouncing the text around. So I installed an ad blocker live. Um, to yeah, try should, to I, do should it. I go to your screen? But then, but the, no, 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 no. Um, but you then, know that those are actually like not allowed on company computers, right? Oh, Just well, remove it when you're done. I will do that. Okay. Um, but even with the ad blocker, I couldn't. So I, I couldn't read it because the ads kept reloading and moving the text around, which is the only <laughs> reason why I installed it. And then I couldn't read it with the ad oh, blocker no. either because they detect that and then block you from seeing the page. So I, I actually don't know because it was literally okay. unreadable. Um, Got it. But he owns at least fifty percent, and after that, I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, True Scott says, you still never told us what actually happens to LMG if something happens to you. I don't know. What happens is it gets parted out and my kids get the proceeds, essentially. Um, I would like for there to be a better plan. We talked about uh, we talked about this, I think, on last week's WAN show where I was discussing the possibility of taking on investment. Um, that would actually be one of the main reasons that I could think of for us to change our ownership structure, because one of, one of the goals, and I've said this since day one is I want to be a real company, right? And real companies don't just die when their founder dies. So figuring out some way that we can create an ownership structure that can last longer than my beating heart would be a, a goal that I that I would have while I'm while I'm still here and while I'm still alive, but I I, I don't I don't know a way to do that without losing um, what's what's special about what we're doing here. Uh, there was an LMG clips video going through um, where I talked through that and I read through all the comments on it. There were some really good comments. Uh, a lot of it was stuff I, I was already aware of, but there was some stuff in there that I just, you know, honestly hadn't really thought of it that way. Like people with more of a financial background than I have. And, you know, basically the thing that, uh, the key piece that I didn't know, like I said, my, my, my business knowledge is all school of hard knocks. I've learned everything yeah. that I've learned because I've had to learn it. And one of the things I didn't know was that not only does a publicly held company become soulless because it serves its shareholders, but it's actually legally obligated to be soulless and put its shareholders first before anything else. Yeah. And what's really complicated about that is that from my point of view, we could make some really short-term, fiscally irresponsible decisions that I see in my vision having enormous an enormous payoff okay. in the long term. Oh, okay. But if the shareholders disagree, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Then they can make an argument that I was not acting in their best interest. They can push me out, and then they can sit and wallow in their own filth with no vision now, and. You know, that's that's what happens to a lot of companies. It has happened. It ha it's happened to a lot of companies. Yeah, yeah. Founders get pushed out. There's no vision left. They chase short-term rewards. They they do whatever Wall Street tells them to do. And then they just have no soul. So I just don't know what to do. Yeah, I, I don't think this is actually the same. And I'm not exactly saying he was like a good person or anything. Um... But Steve Jobs was forced out of Apple. I yep. don't. I don't know if it was through the same means, uh, but I know he was forced out of Apple at one point, and that's like that's pretty crazy to think about, right? Lots of really good questions here. You are assuming YouTube and Floatplane will be relevant in 20, 30, 40 years. I assume nothing. Uh, that's why we're so diversified. That's why the lab's coming. That's, that's why a, that's LTT a Store is such a huge push for us. To put in your mouth. 
That I assume nothing? No, to that you assume that Floatplane and YouTube are going to be around in 30, 40 years. You said nothing even remotely like that. I sure don't. I, I have no idea where that yeah. came from. Linus Media Group is a <laughs> media company. Right now, YouTube is a very favorable platform for us to publish on. But if that changed in the future, we'd be on it. Don't worry. We got yeah, this. That's why you guys are on. Um, Fregler says, is there a way to do some kind of employee ownership plan in that case? Believe it or not, that is something that we have looked into very extensively. And unfortunately, the exact same problems exist. So even if, so if I wanted to get paid, the employees literally have to pay a fair market value. We have to make some kind of argument. So if I wanted to give them a deal, I basically have to put together a legal document that says, this is why the deal is justified. I think we're only worth 5x EBITDA because I'm walking away immediately and I'm the freaking man. And <laughs> I'm the man, They're going to have trouble. But, I'm the dude. But I would actually have to do that. Yeah. Legally speaking, I, mean, I would have to do is. that because any additional value that the asset was found to have I, I I think there are there are potential fraud liabilities. There are potential taxation liabilities. Like there's there's all these problems if we don't sell it at a fair market value. So that's problem number one. So they have to actually have enough money to buy the stupid thing, which we're again because we're because we've been growing for so long and growing at such a great rate. Like look at the size of this company. There's like sixty people here now. It's ridiculous. Um, that multiplier ends up being pretty high and it ends up being a lot like an unreasonable amount of money. So that's issue number one. And issue number two is if we wanted to gift it to them, it's still the tax problem. They still have to pay taxes. It's the exact same problem as my kids. So it's really like, it's really stupid, um, honestly speaking. Um, Another thing, what would happen to LTT if only Linus died? Nothing against Yvonne, but there are a lot of responsibilities that would be extremely hard to take on all at once. I think you guys overestimate how important I am. I, I'm i I'm a pretty face. Um, and I do like to think that Yvonne and I are the yin to each other's yang. She's very detail-oriented. Um, she's very organized. I am very creative. Um, I, I tend to have sort of like a big picture vision, but I absolutely lack the focus to actually put all the pieces in place to get there. That's what she has. Uh, we we absolutely complement each other nearly perfectly. I told her if I believed in <laughs> that, I would say that she was my soulmate. Obviously, that's that's stupid. That's not how the world works. But if I believed in that, I'd say she was because it's like we were made for each other, just how perfectly the puzzle pieces fit together. Um, and anyway, the point is that you guys, I think, underestimate what she does. And I think you overestimate what I do. And what you also, I think, underestimate is the talents and the experience of the people who work here. Look at a James or an Anthony or a Colton or a Nick or a Luke. Those five names that I just named. Okay, let's go through them. Five years six or seven i think colton's up to i think colton's up to seven you're at 10 at least I'm, I'm 10 or 11 yeah so hold on can you add these up for me we're at the 23 so I, far i think i'm i think i'm slightly over 12 nick's at eight years so that's 31 and who what was the last name i think i said anthony anthony yeah. is at five so that is 36 years of experience in online media and i picked just five people under this roof this is an incredible team i mean they no will survive without me whatsoever if you were randomly deleted success would go down a lot but we could keep the ship floating you'd survive if avon randomly disappeared i highly question the ship floating for the ship long. i think the ship could float long term i think the short-term turbulence might sink it before it gets a chance yeah that's the challenge is that what she does is so much more important day to day than what I do, if that kind of makes sense to you guys. So that's 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 what's tough about it. There's a there's just so many things to consider. I wish it was as simple as writing in my will. If I die, 
I would like it to be divided up into 60ths and bequeathed to the employees. But what would actually happen is it would be divided up into 60ths and sold to the highest bidder. And there would be nothing left of its soul. So we need to figure that out. But fortunately, we hopefully have some time. That's that's where I'm at on that. We should talk about sponsors, because if we don't talk about sponsors, then the ship will definitely not float. The show is brought to you today by Corsair. I love it. Uh, thanks to Corsair. <laughs> Their 5000T RGB case features distinctive contours and 208 individually addressable RGB LEDs. My friends, over 200 RGB LEDs. It comes pre-installed with three Corsair light loop RGB fans. It includes a smart controller for fan speeds on up to six fans with dual lighting channels for multiple RGB components, removable front and roof mesh airflow panels for easy maintenance, and two tool-free hinged side panels. It's backed by Corsair's two-year warranty for extended peace of mind, and it's available now, so you can check it out at the link down below. It's amazing how far Corsair has come, is it not? Yeah. From releasing that one case that was thoughtful but flawed to just being the case manufacturer like the default <laughs> it's pretty nuts it's it, it's just crazy they i mean, make like they make so many things their culture is bananas it like i is. at risk of saying too much one of corsair's criterias criteria criterion criterions one of corsair's criteria for entering any category is that they need to be able to see a path to being number one or number two worldwide and I'm like, well, you got to set the bar yeah, high, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they do it pretty consistently. So The show is also brought to you by Squarespace. Do you need a website? If you answered yes, check out Squarespace. If you answered no, there's a good chance you're wrong. Check out Squarespace. <laughs> They've got tons of templates that'll cover a large, large variety of categories of websites. If you need something for your blog or your wedding or your business, Squarespace has got you covered. You can get a domain quickly through Squarespace if you need one or port over an existing domain that you already own. And one of these days, my business team, a representative of which is sitting over there, is going to give me some more cool talking points for Squarespace because they actually have so many cool features that we never talk about. Jake! I want more Squarespace talking points. It's a great platform. We use it for ltxexpo.com as well as linusmediagroup.com. And it's so easy to maintain. It's like just painless. So painless. So get started with a free 14-day trial and head to squarespace.com forward slash WAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Did you want to say something? I... Okay, so, so someone should in, I go off the sponsor thing? Are you going to say something controversial? Yeah, no, you can. Uh, I so I uninstall that block. You can share my screen if you want. Oh, okay. Um, it's all ads. <laughs> the whole page. There's <laughs> one tiny little bar at the top, and then it's ads. I, <laughs> okay. You can close it now. There's nothing there. Uh, um, Flowplane Chat asked me if we're going to talk about the New York Times article. And I was like, what one? And they linked it to me. And I was like, oh, yeah, that merch one. So I clicked on it and was, I think you know what's there. Would I you can't like, show them. So. Would you like to hear something really funny? Sure. The link that I tweeted sharing that article was a privateered link. I didn't know. So the the um, the author of the article did oh. send me a copy of the article, but they actually didn't do it as quickly as one of my one of my bros in uh, did they post it in the YouTuber lounge or in worth reading slash watching slash listening to? I'm actually not sure. This is like my favorite Discord ever. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, here it is. Here it is. So uh, username TA, you know who you are. Um, I didn't recognize this domain. Uh, Messaging-custom-newsletters.nytimes.com. I assumed that that was like the official source. It, yeah. So before the author sent it to me, I copy pasted this one onto Twitter I didn't notice that it was formatted super weird. It says subscriber only newsletter, which I didn't really look at. 
and clearly I'm not a subscriber, and clearly this newsletter is totally working just I'm fine. I'm wondering if they just don't bother to have any of that stuff. If like, I wonder if that guy's a pay or whoever that is is a paying subscriber, and they just send them links that just don't deliver any of that stuff or something. I don't know because that looks like an official link. It does. So anyway, That's so people so people were replying to my tweet, being like. Um, actually, you just shared like a like a paywall stripped version of the thing. I was like, well, I'm not gonna undo it at this point. Yeah, wow, that's funny. Uh, so yeah, we 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 can talk about we can talk about the article. They got a lot of things right from our chat. There's a couple of little details that are probably not not quite how I would describe things, but overall, I think what was really the coolest thing about that article was being featured in a positive context. It feels like a lot of traditional media is Anytime just... Anytime they talk about YouTubers, it's it's just doom and gloom. Just looking for an excuse to crap on yeah. my colleagues and my entire industry. Yep. Like, and I get it. A lot of the time, the, the negative things they're writing about are super negative. And they deserve negative publicity. Sure. But where's the article about Tom Scott? Just like Tom Scott being just awesome because awesome he's Tom Scott or just like massive charity drives. That Where a lot is of it? Modern influencers do. Where is it? Stuff. Yeah. And you know, it's it's frustrating for me. Honestly, I don't expect a ton of the attention for myself. I, I have grown accustomed to being just quietly doing my thing over here. The tech niche is like the least it's the I think it has the highest size to sex appeal ratio on the entire platform because it's actually a gigantic vertical but no one talks about it no one cares and that's changed a little bit over the years um uh when i went to the last uh creator summit that i attended uh marquez for example was was actually like featured in the thing and i was like holy crap someone from our space actually got noticed <laughs> um, YouTube did a thing with us actually, where they did a billboard campaign, uh, and they just like plastered me on billboards, which I was like, I was pretty YouTube tickled promoting about promoting something that isn't just like a, a late night TV show host. Yeah, uh, cool. exa exactly. I Thanks, was like, guys. oh, that's pretty cool. So they've actually done a better job recently. Yeah. You've got to give credit where credit's due. Yep. But um, the point is, I, I don't expect it to be me. I just expect them to like try a little, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be whatever PewDiePie's latest controversy is or whatever, you know, toxic prank channel or, like, whatever, you know, minor got exploited by someone. And, like, to be clear, absolutely. All elite. horrible things. All horrible, and you should say it's horrible. Sure. Um, and Okay, I think there's room for a little more nuance with the PewDiePie stuff. Some of the stuff has been... I'll say more nuanced. There. If if there's horrible things, you can call them. You got to call them horrible, but, but you should probably show the other side of the coin. Yeah, there. That's all I'm asking for. And so, that was honestly the best thing about it was someone reaching out just to have a positive conversation, and be like, "Hey, look, isn't this cool?" Because it is cool. It's totally cool. I think it's cool. We have one more sponsor, and it's brought to you by Zoho. Thanks to Zoho CRM. Zoho CRM is a 360 degree solution for managing your business's sales, marketing, and customer service. With their intuitive UI and simple navigation, you can implement their service quickly and efficiently with minimal disruption to your current processes. They offer AI predictions to help you understand your customers' needs so you can see trends and purchase patterns with a variety of indicators. Plus, their built-in design studio helps you customize your CRM experience to help you spot critical customer or account information at a glance, helping you get your work done faster. They offer flexible contracts, transparent pricing, and an ever-evolving product that grows to meet your needs without snowballing costs. They've got over 15 years of experience in the industry and over a quarter million clients, making Zoho CRM a great solution to support you in your customer relationship management needs. You can get 50% off your annual subscription. That is a deep discount when you use code ZCRM50 at the link down below. All right, what's our next topic here? Should we do a couple of merch messages? It kind of feels yes. like we should do that. We've got some curated ones here. we should at here. least do a few. Yeah, yeah. Because there have been a spicy few today. Great job on that uh, that product photography. I, I, I never, okay. I know that you prefer Alex, Alex P, you know, in person, but I know you still go by A Prime online. What am I supposed to use for you in front of the audience? He doesn't know, so how am I supposed to know? Gosh darn it. <laughs> You're killing me here. Well, whatever. You guys know him as A-Prime. He did all the photography for the 
privateer shirt, as we're calling it. And uh, you did you did a bang up job. That one with the gun, I love it. The smoke, there's the one, like the fog. There's one for Luke too. But it's yeah, it's didn't make it on the story. Sick. It's sick. I love it. Thank you. Uh, what can I do for you, though? Oh, you're just here to say hi. Okay, cool. Uh, merch messages, then. Uh, Thomas B. says, Great Real Talk, Linus. How's the lab building going? And would making your own crypto coin help fund your lab? Okay, Thomas. Let's have a chat. Would... See, I don't want to use the word stealing, because if people give it to you, it's not technically stealing. And the last thing I want is to use the wrong word to describe what is functionally the same. Would privateering. Yet again. <laughs> Just use that as a catch-all term for like everything. Would relieving people of ah. their heavy purses oh, make my purse heavier? Why, yes. <laughs> yes, it would, factually speaking. Would I be able to sleep at night knowing that I had executed a perfect rug pull? I was going to say, <laughs> what, you can reword this. Would rug pulling your own crypto coin help fund your life? <laughs> rug pulling my own crypto coin would probably help fund my own small island. <laughs> I mean, seriously, with our tech savvy audience and like... There's something a lot of people don't realize. We have a new section on the forum where the business team is posting potential sponsors and current sponsors talking about controversies, trying to make sure that we're uh, we're we're doing everything in our power to improve our due diligence on sponsorships. It's essentially what we're doing is we want to make sure that our sponsors reflect as well on us as we reflect on them. Um, and as as part of that process, uh, they've posted one particular sponsor to which someone replied, well, I really don't think this makes sense because LTT's audience is predominantly 14-year-olds. And I went... Well, that's wrong. Um, I, oh, man. It, where does the idea come from that as soon as people turn 15, they no longer have a sense of humor or like fun? Can we, can't we just be fun for, and adults can enjoy it too? What's wrong with that? And the funniest thing about it is a lot of the people who seem to have that perception are not 14 years old. I know that. Yeah. And it's like, why are you making this assumption that nobody else out there could be just like you? An IT professional that does enterprise stuff or software by day or just enjoys video games and wants a fun way to stay up to date on technology and enjoys our wacky projects and, and, and just likes being along for the ride and thinks that we're kind of a cool <laughs> bunch of people. Like, is that so impossible to think of, to, to imagine, right? Um, I've actually been told on many occasions, like, I'm super into tech. Frankly, I, I know more about high hardcore IT tech than you do, Linus. And man, the book of things I don't know about IT would be a long one indeed. I don't know if it I don't know if it could fit on our petabyte project server. Um, so I'll I'll get messages from people being like, but that's not why I watch you. That stuff's boring. I do that stuff every day at work. Yeah. Why would you yeah? I just I just want to hear about like the cool consumer gadgets that like I, I don't have, I don't want to read a dry, boring article about. I want the fun version of it, and that's what we do. Like, like I, it's, it's amazing to me how many people watch our content and don't know what we do. I, I just, I love it. I, I love it, you guys. It's, it's great. I guess that means we're doing it really well. Lem Dog on Floatplane Chat said, "Bleep! I'm a 30 year old director at my company and converted my the entire company to framework laptops because Linus. I'm a I'm pretty far from being 14 years old. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and to be clear, you know that's why it's so important for us to disclose things like that. I am an investor in framework, and that framework's not perfect. Um, you know, for me, and I I love that Lemdog. That is absolutely fantastic because what you did is." knowing that there are going to be some pitfalls along the way. You put your money where your mouth is and you supported a company that has a vision that you stand for. That's freaking awesome. That's exactly what we do. That's exactly what we do. That's cool. Um, what am I supposed to be talking about right now? I don't, I don't even uh, remember. We, we got here from talking about... Right, so could we rug pull and would it be a rug pull of epic proportions? Yes, I do believe it would be. In the same way that years ago, we could have partnered with a local developer to make a mobile game, and we could have 
just microtransactioned the crap out of it, and I could probably own a yacht by this point. But not as cool as Bezos is. No. That one is but but a yacht. But a small If you don't have to deconstruct a historical ridge. A small bridge, yacht. Do you <laughs> Yeah. Do you don't if you don't have to deconstruct a historical bridge, is it really a cool yacht? No. Okay, know. so it wouldn't have been cool, yeah. but it would have been okay. Well, can I just call it a boat? <laughs> I know, a nice boat. <laughs> okay. I'd have a, I'd, I could have a boat. So the point is that we've had opportunities where we could have cashed in on the trendy, cool way to make money, and we decided not to. We decided that we really like it better. Slow and steady wins the race. And we made the ultimate decision because we were going to do a coin at one point. We were like, yes, we are going to do it. And we learned more and reflected more and we decided not to do it. Um, so we're not going to do that. It is possible that some kind of blockchain something could make sense. That was something that actually yeah. got brought up in the in the comments under that video about potential funding sources is hey don't go public because the reporting requirements are going to bury you under under accounting costs um and and just just administrative overhead but what if you guys did some kind of like blockchain based like smart smart contract thing for some kind of like commitment to like if you if you buy it for this value, then it will get paid out at X value as the company something dividend something. I don't know. They they explained it better. Um, the point is blockchain that is a super interesting technology. There could be could use for something. There like could be ways for us to to raise funds, but it would have to be in a way where we feel like people are getting something for their money, and that's a big part of why we have merch messages now instead of just doing. Um, I don't even remember what they're called anymore. Super chats. Because a super chat, if I don't read it, uh, or because I miss it because their feature is broken, or if I forget, or whatever the case may be, all you got was a colored bit of text. With a merch message, you're going to get a product in the mail. So even if we don't get to it, or our answer isn't thorough enough for your liking, or whatever the case may be, you haven't just thrown away your money, which I personally think is really, really important. So the only way that we would do any kind of fundraising activity would be if I can figure out what's in it for you. Yeah. And some people might say, you know what? In fact, I've seen a lot of people say this. All I need to be in it for me is to like own a chunk of LMG. And it, like where it's like, and I've, I've I just even, like the stock. I've seen people compare it to owning, owning real estate on the moon. You know, like it doesn't even need to be legally binding. Just a certificate of I own one share of LMG, and it's like, yeah, fine, fine, fair enough. But instead of NFTs, yeah, you should do like a tile wall in one of the buildings, and people can like buy a tile, and put whatever they want on there as long as it's appropriate. That's pretty cool. We had an idea like that. There Similar. was supposed to be a name wall when we moved. Do we have that list of names? Because we really do need to put it up at some point. That was like seven I years think ago. It's somewhere. Yeah. Okay, we should. Can can you can can you yeah, make a note to get me, that uh... list of names? Uh, and fun fact: we actually have something kind of similar to that coming. Uh, well, it's the feature right. you're working on. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, it's done. It's done. I mean, well, why don't you tell them what the feature is? It's super cool. Conrad pushed it like a bit ago. Um, anyways, it's the free upsell shelf. Conrad's been done this for that a bit. That is such you a terrible it. internal name. We need a cooler name for that. very quickly. My headphones are really having a lot of trouble. Um, mine were too. I think what happened was someone was fidgeting with them and they unscrew. So make sure they are actually screwed together as well as plugged together. Oh. So I, I fixed that. Didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the thing that probably needs a more marketable name than free yeah, upsell free, shelf. Free upsell shelf. What does that even mean? The Nothing. fuss, man. The fuss. The fuss. Um, but basically, when you're checking out, you have things in your cart. I don't know if it's populated right now, so I don't know if it's doing it right now. Um, but there's certain free items, and there will be new ones, and I'm sure the ones that are in there right now will be circulated out eventually. Yeah. But there's certain free items that you can choose from to have one of that can go into your cart as well, like maybe a sticker. Or, or something else like that. Sticker pack. We do packs of stickers. Yeah, sticker pack. Uh, the thing you're going to talk about. Do you know how much I spent on stickers this year? Probably a lot. Over $100,000. Yeah. I'm not even joking. I'm not even surprised. 
Because when when I, when honestly when we were tasked with this free upsell shelf thing, I was like reading the details on it, and I was like, this is gonna be expensive because some of the ideas that you guys have to give away for free, people sell for like very notable amounts of money. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> like, I'm talking like fifteen, twenty dollars. Nick sent me the approval from other request. Other comparable stores. Nick sent me the approval request for our sticker PO. And I was like, what? <laughs> Why do you need a CEO signature to buy stick? Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You might say I got sticker shock. Oh. <laughs> it was like 140 grand or something stupid it's like insane. that. I'm like, how long is this going to last? He's like, oh, the year. And what wasn't, wasn't okay. one of the thoughts too to give away a pin? Yeah. Pins are like, metal and oh, have weight. This is great. And they're expensive. Lee Son Cray says, I don't like the stickers. They're just junk to me. That That's the point. is the point of this feature. Yeah. So we want you to be able to pick your own free item. Yeah. So you'll be able to choose between stickers. Uh, we want to do pins. And the first option other than stickers is going to be a postcard. So if you remember the GPU wasteland mouse pad uh, that Sarah designed, she adapted it to a little coloring sheet. So it's black and white and you can color it. And then on the back is a postcard. And the idea is that we're going to encourage people to color it in and then mail it back to us. And then for like a wall of inspiration in yeah. the creator warehouse space that they're going to be moving into, hopefully in about a month, they're going to have this whole wall of postcards from all over the world from our customers. And the idea behind it for me was just like making it a little bit more real. Cause right now it seems really cool. Yeah. I think for sweet. a lot of them, it feels like they're, they just like, there's these designs and there's like a photo shoot and we, we, we like show it off and we talk about it on when show. And then it's just like, it, it's like, it's a one way relationship. You're just firing stuff out into the ether and it's gone. And people leave reviews on the site, and I love that. I will just sit and idly read reviews on LTTstore.com because I, I I love it. It's A, very encouraging most of the time, and B, very helpful whenever it's not encouraging because we're always trying to do better. Um, and so I thought it would be really cool to see every one of those cards and know that someone somewhere is wearing a shirt or drinking from a water bottle, and they like colored that for us. And so I, I'm expecting to see some really cool stuff. Yeah, sweet. Conrad also did a cool implementation for it uh, on mobile, so you can like swipe through them and stuff, because obviously the cool. a wide shelf isn't super compatible with a tall phone. Um, but yeah, 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 it's good stuff. Free screwdriver bit? Ooh. That is going to be tough because tough. an individual bit coming back to our conversation about like uh, measuring out spools of tubing and, you know, managing, managing that we're not going to have individual bits for sale. I don't think it's just, it's just, it's, it's not worth touching, I guess would be the best way that I can describe it because you got to understand that every, every item has a cost, right? because somebody has to touch it to put it there, touch it to pick it up, touch it to put it somewhere else. And every time you touch something, that has a cost because someone has to do it. And so something that has such a low cost, it's just not worth even touching. So that's why we're gonna have bit clips rather than sell individual bits. There's an interesting idea mentioned yeah. by uh, Angry Panda PC. Uh, he said, can I pick nothing? Yes, by the way. Uh, and then says, or like to plant trees or something. Oh, interesting. Well, interesting. That's, that would be cool. I think that's really cool. I'd be super down for something like that. Sure, awesome. why not? You could maybe go with the Mr. B special and just do like remove garbage from ocean or plant tree. I love it. I think that's sweet. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out sort of a way to manage that, but absolutely. And, and how to figure out like how much contribution can actually go because it should be fairly comparable to the cost of the other things. Yeah, I think and... we could probably make it as simple as it's just like like a dollar or something like that. A I mean, dollar it's... might might be high compared to the cost of a sticker pack. Compared to the cost of an enamel pin, it won't be. Yeah, that's fair. So as long as we can figure out, maybe what we'll do is we'll run it without that option for a while, figure out what the average cost of what people select is, and then we'll just do some equivalent to that, and yeah. then we'll just make that part of just cost of doing business and we'll assume that fixed overhead on every order and we'll just go from there i think that'd be really cool yeah that'd be super cool uh people are talking like third world computing projects yeah that's that's amazing i love and, it and just just like all the other things on the free upsell shelf it could cycle out so someone mentioned the third world computer projects thing yeah yeah well we could do trees for, for a sure bit. we could do ocean for a bit we could do a different project for a bit 
I like that. Man, merch messages awesome. are one of my favorite things because when someone has to like go on your website, shop, place an order to send something it ends up being a lot more thoughtful than a lot of the other interaction that we get. So it acts as kind of a, a really, um, it acts as a really great filter because you end up with a lot less garbage. Mind you, maybe part of it is that we have uh, Jake sorting through all the garbage now. Yeah, Jake helps. Bell events. I should just call him Bell because otherwise he's going to get confused with the, the one true Jake. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have too many Jakes now. We've got Jacob at Creator Warehouse. We've got Jake Bell in the business team. We've got Jake Tyvee in the writing team. I'm probably missing a Jake. There's just a handful of names that we have like a freaking ton of. <laughs> uh, what's uh, what's one of the other ones that's ridiculous? Yeah, we have like so many Alexes. Yeah, we have way too many Alexes. Yeah, it's it's terrible. We need to get rid of some of them. <laughs> The field train goes a lot more thoughtful and the message on the screen's like, Ayo <laughs> I mean, okay. Sometimes it's also fun just to like see your message on the show because if you send us one we actually have to reply to, a lot of the time you don't get to see it on the screen. So there's there's benefits to both. There's benefits to both. Uh did I eventually answer that question? I I, I can't remember anymore. Uh, I, is this still the crypto lab question? Yeah, maybe we should like talk about a tech topic. Wow, yeah, that was that was a really long time on one merch message. Boy, it sure was. <laughs> we tangented so many times along the way. Sorry, I try. <laughs> I do. I do try. Microsoft will soon require a Microsoft uh. account and internet connection to set up Windows 11 Pro. This was already a thing for home, but now you will officially be wait hold on a second yeah oh my goodness yeah you will officially not be able to use windows 11 even the pro version without a microsoft account oh. it was a matter of time you either buy the product or you are the product ladies and gentlemen yeah brutal i i i Part of me wants to go down the path just to rib them a little bit of like, would you have done this sooner if your driver compatibility was better so it was actually possible? Um, Roasted. But I don't know. I don't think that's actually the case. I just wanted to roast them. Yeah, the fact that it, like today still you can buy a com buy a computer component and install Windows on it and like the Ethernet driver doesn't work out of the box. It's Insane. Just, how many actual like Insane. network chipsets are there? Probably hundreds. <laughs> Like not probably hundreds, definitely hundreds. But when we're talking the scale of Microsoft as a company, could they have hundreds of network how, drivers like, baked in? Yes. Yes, the, they could. And and how like at least in, in my experience, Linux has had that just so on lock for so long. For so I've never long. had a problem with a network driver on Linux. Not once. Okay. And I know some people have Wi Fi back in the day. I, I never did for Wi Fi back in the day either. Okay. And I know okay, I know okay. especially for Wi Fi, other yeah. people did. I'm not okay. saying this was not a All case right. for everyone. Yeah. Okay. But I it was always easier for me. And at least one was always what you really needed, right? Getting at least one way to access the internet was always the big problem. Because once you yes. get the one, you can update things, you can fix everything easily. Yeah. So yeah. Um so privateer shirt is pretty popular. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh this like constantly here to see if I can catch it. Uh, nope. Ah, oh, crap. Come on, come on. Just need one more, one more to come through. Come on. I think it's a cool shirt, even if you don't have the context, which might help. Yeah. <laughs> to be completely okay. Honest. Okay. Did we get one more? No, nah, it was something else. Okay. Crud. Well, whatever. We sold 419. Wow. 420. I got hey! it. I got it. Hey. There's my dashboard. You guys can't read that from there, but it doesn't matter. The point is 420 of them. So really excited to get these shirts in your guys' hands, uh, see reviews, see what you guys think of how close we got to the feel of the existing ones. Um, what am I supposed to be talking about right now? Right. So this whole Microsoft account thing was announced as part of Windows 11 Insider Preview Build 2255 which is an extensive rework addressing most of the main issues. That's that's and making optimistic. More. Uh, drag and drop to taskbar now works. 
<laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, color profile, quick settings, uh, task manager redesign, more dark mode themed apps, uh, Mika UI design in more windows, better snap layout picker, uh, new swipe gestures for notifications, quick settings, and start. Have they fixed the issue where when you have a bunch of notifications queued up, you like cannot get at your taskbar, at your uh, system tray rather? I that is it. so annoying. When you have like when you're like, trying to when you're trying to like sneak in there between notifications to get something. Um, Start menu folders, folder content previews. Couldn't you do start menu folders in like Windows 95? A lot of this stuff, honestly, I'm like, when did that originally come in? Vista? Like, wow. Okay. Expanded dynamic refresh rate support. The release notes clarify that an internet connection is only required for the UBI or first time setup. But if the PC is for personal use, you will need a Microsoft account to continue setup. Realistically, most people will probably want to use a Microsoft account. Xbox services, um, uh, I mean, find my finding your device. Uh, there, there are lots of like legitimately good reasons. I don't think you were able to use BitLocker without a Microsoft account. Is that correct? I just got a suggestion Not for sure. the free upsell shelf. Yeah, the bonus bin. The bonus bin. Oh, oh, like for a name for it. Yeah. Who sent you that? Uh, the oh. my Shopify friend. Oh, really? I don't know if I if he wants me to say his real name. On yeah, it. sure, that's fine. Bonus bin. That's it's not good. bad. It's pretty good. The bonus bin. Kind of, I'm thinking of like bargain bin, but it's not bargain. It's, it's not bargain. bonus. It's, it's free. like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty good. I'm not paying you for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm privateering it. Right now, he's trying to pay us. I, <laughs> I like it. Perfect. I think he's trying to pay us right now. Actually, I mean, so it's their, it's that's in their best thing. interest for us to like sell more stuff through their platform, I suppose. So we're both kind of winning here. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? The, okay, so I don't know. I do you do you use a non Microsoft account with your computer? No. Yeah, I use a Microsoft account. You know what's funny is I want to, but my Microsoft account like randomly is broken on both my work computer and I think my laptop right now. So if I go into my Microsoft account, it'll be like manage your Microsoft account. And I click it and like takes me opens a web browser and like takes me to my profile. But my computer just goes straight from booting up to the desktop, and I can't. Uh, what was I trying to enable? What? I was trying to. Oh, I was trying to enable Windows Hello or something. It was like you need to link an account in order to something something. And I was like, but but it is. <laughs> so uh, what I'm kind of thinking is stop. What I'm kind of thinking is I'll upgrade to Windows 11 and maybe that'll fix my problems. <laughs> Okay. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. Um, so we're both in La La Land. Yeah. Um, uh, Jay from Nucle Nucleon, who posted this news on the forum, uh, sums it up thusly: the 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 controversial or the uh, the mixed reaction to this news. I hope whoever thought of this idea and everyone who approved this steps on a Lego barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> what a polite what a polite way of uh yeah, of good. saying a pox on you yeah a pox on you and your acquaintances all <laughs> uh, anthony's take uh windows is clearly making money via ad and tracking revenue these days so it makes sense if microsoft is hoping to transition to a free-to-use model still even apple doesn't force you to sign into an apple id on mac windows is becoming more of a walled garden by the day yeah for sure i think i yeah. would be less annoyed by it um, if if Microsoft services weren't such trash, um, like you're saying with the the bug that you've had, trying to use any like Xbox gaming related software on a PC is just the worst experience. Try to game it's with a so minor, bad. with a minor, mm -hmm. like a young person. Other than like we did last night, so but, right? But I set it up. Okay. Find a young person in your life, a cousin or something like that. Try to play a video game with them. Is the difficulty in like they find it very obtuse to be able to? It's how difficult it is to even be aware that there is anything blocking certain services from working. Like Minecraft dungeons would not work online for a minor. And it's like, there needs to be a wizard, oh, so Microsoft. You didn't, you didn't just like lie about their age? No. Oh, okay. They have actual minor accounts okay and there's no like hey we couldn't help noticing that your microsoft account is a minor one 
is your mom or dad around to sign in and go through this wizard to because that would tick, 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 make tick, sense because that would make sense yeah it's awful and like the wizard you have to put in a password to be able to access the wizard whatever it doesn't matter but there should be some type of prompt to let you know what the heck is even going on it's freaking awful uh, it's so it's so frustrating because you know that the, it it's it's you know how like there's the 80 20 rule i feel like they've done like 30 percent of the job <laughs> like they they need a significant amount more effort to get to that 80 percent where it's like okay this is acceptable now and they're yeah. not there and it's really really frustrating and the more that they set it up as a requirement for things where you have to use this thing the more it needs to be better yes if it just sits there and it's terrible and I don't have to use it, then I don't Fine. care. Yeah, go whatever. be go be terrible in a corner, Microsoft yeah, online. Do whatever. Whatever. But if I have to use it, it needs to be significantly better. There's a reason why we didn't talk about this pretty much at all for years. It's because we didn't have to interact with it. And now that the amount that we have to interact with it is increasing, we're going to talk about how terrible it is because it's terrible. That's it. Really, really frustrating. Um, Digital Matrix IO says under 13 is really hard because of COPPA. Fair enough. But I think what I suggested is better than just having a hidden control panel for the parent account that has no like obvious way to create a family group in it and no obvious description of all the different boxes that you need to tick in order to actually just play games with your kids. And here's another thing that's just common sense to me. If I am set up as the parent guardian of my family group, I should automatically be set up as someone who is allowed to interact with my- Yeah, you should my... be able to invite them to things. Immediately. Yeah. I shouldn't even have to activate their access to online gaming in order for me to play with them and for them to play with each other. Because what if I didn't want to? Yeah. What if I didn't want them to be- How is this a useful protection like... if there is no if there's no allow list and no common sense applied to it. There's there's lots of scenarios where I could see a parent want it, like, like let's take Halo, for instance. For I, instance. I want to be able to play Halo with my son. I don't necessarily want my son to be able to play Halo on his own. That seems like a very reasonable use yep. case. I don't know. There, there's a funny comment from uh, Philippine Chat. Major Mayhem said, uh, Microsoft is the MVP of MVP. <laughs> the most valuable player of minimum viable product very funny i liked that that was good okay that's pretty funny <laughs> I, my, my problem is like i almost think it's below like i don't think it's at mvp yet but that is what it is um disney wants to be your government now this one's just kind of like weird what is this disney live in a corporate suburban hellscape with disney story living Oh my God, this is Disney hotels, but you actually live there? You live there, yeah. There's some really amazing stuff, like members of the public uh, will be able to buy day passes to visit the suburban community. Um, and it's like uncertain if people that live there will have visitor passes that they can give to their non-Disney visiting friends. Um, <laughs> there's like some amazing sounding thing in the middle. The center of the community is a 24 acre grand oasis. I'm sorry. I got to stop you here for a second. No joke. This is not like theatrics. I'm not acting for the camera. I felt physically ill yeah. hearing you say that. Yep. I read it before the show, which is the only reason why I didn't have a strong reaction. Yeah. Go on though. Yeah, it's rough. Um, so yeah, 1900 housing units named Cotino. Uh, will be built in the city of Rancho Mirage. Um, they're hoping to offer some of the same types of experiences that you would find at Disney resorts, including this 24 acre grand oasis that will have clear water using the Crystal Lagoons technology used at their resorts. Uh, there will be shopping and entertainment centers as well as a hotel um, and a clubhouse for residents. It sounds extremely similar to a retirement village if you've ever been to one of those. Um, like I said, members of the public need to buy day passes to get there. Um, this is not the first time Disney has tried to create this community. There's um, interesting YouTube videos on this, actually. Epcot, or E-P-C-O-T, in Disney World famously began as Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. That was supposed to revolutionize the concept of the American city. Walt's vision was never seen to completion, and now Epcot is... Uh, based on whoever wrote this, I've never seen it. Uh, the worst park at Walt Disney World. Fair enough. Yeah. Wow. 
Um, While Disney is designing the neighborhoods, they won't be building anything. They are handing off that to other developer companies like DMB Development, a builder of luxury communities around the U.S. Disney has not announced prices or financing options or anything like that. Huh. Whew. I'm extremely uncomfortable right now. Yeah, so when are you going to make the Linus Media Group tech community? You know what's really funny? A 24 acre land center in the middle. Is that actually is something that Luke and I have talked about? Like there are there are <laughs> literal ghost towns like in our province that yeah. we could probably swoop in and just be like, "Yep. This used to be like a mining or logging or whatever community and now it isn't and so nobody's like here anymore." Uh, we're just going to come in and we're going to like buy it. We're going to pay for a big fat fiber pipe into the town because realistically, that's all most of us need. <laughs> and <laughs> this is our HQ now. Uh, it's Internet Town, British Columbia. Yeah. Um, I, honestly, I think it's a matter of time until a YouTuber does it. There's been I mean, there's a there's a town in I think it was Sweden. I don't remember. It's one of those three you know, countries up there um, that did like, they took over, it was an old military community based mm -hmm. around a base, military base. Uh, the base was no longer used anymore. The community was thus abandoned because of that. So they revamped the entire thing and they turned it into like tech startup town. There's, there's like incredible internet connections to everywhere. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're, they're throwing money into startups to give them grants and stuff to start pushing there so they can like set up this new town um it, it's it's very interesting um i don't know that that was like four or five years ago that i heard about that i don't know if it ever actually like worked out or not but it's an interesting idea because what you're what we're seeing a lot of right now is the same cities that have always exist just getting bigger mm -hmm. not a ton of like new cities cropping up yeah uh jason k003 on float plane says how far away is that from a cult well um <laughs> well if you don't put on your linus socks and linus sandals and linus underwear and linus pants and linus shirt and linus toque and linus sweater to go outside um then you just get kicked out yeah so i'd say it's pretty close to a cult yeah <laughs> <No>. <laughs> internet town bc let's go man i mean float plane chat obviously you know float plane chat's in not <laughs> representative of the general population but like i'm freaking in <laughs> i'm coming boys <laughs> There's a float plane theater on prem. <laughs> yes. Uh, what else is there? Apple SSDs are ridiculously slow, actually. And also, don't buy a Mac Mini or an iMac if you like your data. This is from Anthony. <laughs> so definitely not biased at all. Hold on a second. <laughs> Let me have a look here. While developing Linux for M1, it has been discovered that Apple's SSDs are running much slower than expected. It turns out the fsync command, which is supposed to tell the drive to flush everything out from caches to the main storage, doesn't do that on macOS. Oh. Instead, it only flushes current writes to the drive, leaving cached data in volatile memory. The command to actually do fsync called f underscore full sync has some unflattering benchmark results. So if you're not flushing, you get 40,000 IOPS. And if you are, you get 46 Whew. IOPS. Not 46,000, 46. And this is on the MacBook Air M1 running macOS. On an x86 iMac with a WD1 terabyte NVMe SSD on Linux, um, not flushing gets you 20,000 and flushing gets you 2,000. That's still an order of magnitude less, but that's a lot better and on an x86 laptop plus a samsung 860 evo 500 gig sata ssd not flushing is 5000 flushing is 143 the end result is that apple storage appears to be much faster than the others up until the point where you care about data integrity where it becomes comparable to a spinning hard drive mac os doesn't even seem to try to proactively issue syncs you can write a file on mac os f sync it wait five seconds issue a hard reboot e.g. via USB power delivery command, and the data is gone. That's pretty bad, is a quote from uh, <laughs> Not sure Hector who. Martin oh. on Twitter. That's rough. I love this Twitter thread. The start is amazing. Well, this is unfortunate. <laughs> oh, no. Apple's one of those companies where I just, I get really frustrated because they spend more on R&D than almost any other company on earth and they make like 
nine products. <laughs> well, no, okay. Look, it's not like that. I'm obviously being facetious. They they make they design and through partners build some of the most amazing silicon in the world. Obviously, that takes a freaking lot of work. And they make more than nine products. And they make more than nine products. But for the the breadth and depth of their product portfolio, it's very yeah, it does seem like they spend a lot of money. And I just wish that some of it was on stuff that I cared about. <laughs> yeah. I just I just feel like I just feel like they yeah, could do more better. Um to be clear, this is basically never an issue on laptops because the battery should keep the machine from losing power before the OS has finished a disk flush command. But for desktops like the M1 Mac Mini or 24-inch iMac, this could be a huge problem. Either writing your files is excruciatingly slow, or you could lose even a file you saved five minutes ago to a power outage or a, thankfully rare, system crash. Hope you've got an uninterruptible power supply, says Anthony. And his discussion question is, why? I guess I already kind of covered that. When you have the R&D budget of a small country, why don't you get the basics right? <laughs> I... Yeah, just hold your phone differently, dude. But hey, at, at least they've uh, at least they've got it nailed down how to like you know lock screen replacements. Yeah, you know, so you can't. That's can good. That do was that. worth it. Yeah, that was totally worth the time they spent on that. They shouldn't have spent that time making sure that you don't lose your data. <laughs> that was. I mean, you should have just had iCloud anyway, realistically. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, and I want to clarify, I know that they backtracked the whole locking out screen replacements thing, but that doesn't change that they did the R&D for it. I, I think they backtracked it because they because of the, the pushback, not because they didn't want it. Jaden says, if you don't have a UPS, you are wrong. I knew for years that I'm supposed to have a UPS before I was willing to spend UPS money on say, having a UPS. I can't necessarily afford it. Uh, yeah. If you can definitely afford a UPS and you do important things on your computer and you don't have one, I think you're wrong. That's fair. That is fair. And in our final big news topic of the day, Dr. Ian Cutris has left Anontech. Oh no. After 11 years, Dr. Cutris, AKA Tech Tech Potato, uh, the tech journalist known for eating giant wafers. Yes, my friends, that is an actual file photo of Dr. Cutris that we have here. Actually, I, yeah, it's his photo. Um, he has announced his departure from Anontech as senior editor. He joined as a freelancer while Anand, the Anand of Anand Tech, was still editor-in-chief and has been responsible for some of Anand Tech's most technical articles in recent years, particularly with respect to CPU arch architecture excuse me, and lithography. His crowning achievement, in his humble opinion, I added the humble part, uh, was talking AMD into the $3,990 price tag for the Threadripper 3990X. This is one of those things kind of like how my crowning achievement is like more packaging on tubing. Um, this is a, yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> small win, but a notable one nonetheless. I love it, Dr. <laughs> Cutris. As for where he's going, he says it will be a mixture of behind the scenes and public facing opportunities, as well as consulting within the tech industry. He says he will announce future roles on Twitter or LinkedIn, probably both. He seems to know where he's going and is amused by the speculation online. His farewell article will not be the last article on Anantech. Some have been pre-written and are waiting to go up, including an AMD Rembrandt review and an interview with Raja Kaduri, Intel Senior VP of Architecture in the Graphics and Software Division. And a Google search for Raja Kaduri will actually reveal Dr. Cutris's previous interview. So there are some discussion questions around this. Are we hiring Dr. Cutris? Is literally in there from Anthony. Yes. Um, well... There are other discussion questions. Like, what does this mean for tech journalism? Uh, what would it mean if he went to work for an Intel? Uh, like, okay, hold on, let's see. So if he went to work for an Intel, like Ryan Shrout, or went to work for Apple, like Anand did, or went to work for, uh, who, are, who are some of my other favorites? Uh, Gary Key um, went to work for Asus. Or went to work for AMD, like Scott Wasson from the Tech Report, now, now at Intel. Um, is it the fate of tech journalists to work for the companies they cover given enough time? So what I will say about that is that our goal is to do our part to reverse that trend with the lab. 
we are we are putting serious budgets behind recruitment for serious people who seriously know serious things about serious tech. And we're still going to have a fun way of presenting that data and that analysis, but we we want to get real serious business about the analysis and we recognize that I'm not going to learn everything there is to know about chip architecture. In fact, I might not learn a small fraction of what there is to learn about yeah. chip architecture. But what I can do is I can bring in experts, make sure that they have a bag of money to tell me all about it, and we can continue making super fun videos for you guys, because that's what I'm really good at. If I had a superpower, it would be taking something that there's almost no one on earth who understands, least of all me, and turning it into something that's really fun and engaging that still manages to teach people something. That's, I think, what I do. So I want the lab to make me way better at that. Um, and then I'll, actually there's like so many, oh man, there's like the vision for the lab is like broad. It's very expensive. It, yeah. It's going to be really expensive. Yeah. So rug pull. Why is that expansive? It's both. Yeah. That's also true. Rug pull? Rug pull the lab. We got to rug pull it's the lab. It's really the only choice. I think we it's don't. the only option. I think we have a moral obligation to rug pull yes. to fund the lab. Yep. Would you guys support a rug pull? You know what? We don't do too many straw pulls these days, but I think we have to know the answer to this. Okay. I think I think chat is actually going to explode um, if you don't say it. If I don't say what? Uh, whether or not we're hiring Dr. Cutrus. If I don't say whether or not we're hiring Dr. Cutrus? Yeah. Oh. So how's the poll going? Uh, yeah, let me just go ahead and post that. I'm going to start okay. in the float plane chat. Good, yeah. I'll, I'll propagate it from there. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, you propagate it from there? Oh, you're going to throw it in the other ones? Well, yeah. here, why don't you do Twitch and I'll do YouTube. Okay. Okay. We're going to put it in there. Boop, 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 boop. Guys, check out that chat. We're gonna, oh, oh I'm not logged in on Twitch. Okay. Well, why don't I just do all of them then? Nice. Nice. I voted. Nice. That was my contribution. Thanks, Luke. Really yep. appreciate you, fam. Yep. Okay. Oh, my God. I don't need the chat rules for my own chat. I voted for the correct answer. Like, Twitch, wow. Why does Twitch do that? Uh, it's like not being able to play video games with my own children. Like, why? It, there, there just needs to be a common sense filter on this stuff. Uh, all right. Here we go. You guys ready for the results? I'm ready for the results. Results. Actually, oh, I meant to vote. Hold on. I wanted to vote. Wow. Oh, okay. It has just been swinging. Rug pull the chip. Rug pull to fund the lab. 86% yes. You guys are such trolls. Uh, that's why I like what you. What if we just told everyone it was a rug pull? Eth ethical rug pull? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like 100% transparency from the start. Well, we talked what about if, that with LTT we, coin. What if we called it? We even it, talked about it back then. What if we then? called it LTT Labs rug pull coin? <laughs> like, like, no, Our no coin. question. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That would actually be really funny. Um, Megan says, first merch order since LTX 19. Can't wait for LTX 2023. Oh man. Uh, Thanks, Megan. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate you. Picked up the women's sweat something. I, I missed it. Um, Jeff Bellavance over there moved it on me. For those of you not in on the joke, I'm calling him Jeff because I accidentally called him Jeff because I had a total brain fart a couple of weeks ago. It's it's Jake. I'm just going to go with Bell. Let's go with Bell. Let's do some curated merch messages, shall we? Biggs was asks, if you want to do a fundraising event, just add a wallet on the store so people can give you money and get merch in return later. That's called a gift card. Uh, <laughs> thank you, though. Thank you. I do appreciate the idea. Um, we do have gift cards if That's you'd like awesome. to go pick up some gift cards on LTTstore.com. Yeah. Yeah. DeFrandal picked up a couch ripper pillow. Will the screwdriver have a way to adapt for square drive sockets? So because it uses a standard hex, uh, a standard hex socket, you can just get any adapter you yeah. want and plug it into it and it will work fine, uh, just fine. <gasps> Uh, a question while you're picking that up. Do you see your children having a part in the business when they are older? I would love for them to, but I'm not going to be one of those parents who plans out my children's future before they even, like, you know, have their first sip of alcohol. Like, yeah. That's why my parents never planned a future for me and why I ended up being such a loser. Nice. I still haven't done it. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not true. I had a sip of beer when I was like seven or eight. Have I ever said on the show what my parents did with my brother and I 
in regards to alcohol? I think have it I might told, be Luke's story time. Have I told you? I know the story. Yeah. So my my parents both said um, that we could we could have alcohol. We could drink. This was like before we were of age or whatever. But the first time that we would have to do it, we were gonna we were we could have as much as we wanted. We would go buy however much they wanted us to buy. Um, but we'd have to be locked in the backyard with them the whole time. And it was like that's the coolest okay. thing ever. And then neither of us took him up on it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure my brother waited till he was like actually, re- uh, not entirely, but mostly until he's reasonably of age. And then he's not even anywhere. I think he drinks like once a year and I don't drink at all. So it clearly worked. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, for for me, it was uh, it was it was the classic, you know, give it to them while their taste buds are still extremely sensitive um so and it's really gross so it's a combination of things like i have a lot of really negative associations with the smell of beer and wine yeah. um me too i will i will leave it at that um <laughs> and uh one of one of them is that i tried it when i was very young and it was just you know obviously it's, it's a god-awful taste when you're that's not mostly it for it. me i don't have negative associations from like people necessarily i just remember like one time I was at a friend's house and the adults were drinking wine and one of the adults offered me wine. And I took a sip and I was like, that's genuinely disgusting. It's literally fermented. That's really gross. Yeah. And then a buddy in high school was like, I, I got some beers. Do you want one? And I was like, no. And he was like, we'll try a sip. And I was like, okay. And I tried a sip and I was like, that's disgusting. You can <laughs> you can have the rest if you want. This is gross. I don't know. I'm just not into it. I know a lot of people are going to yeah. disagree with me. For yeah. That, I mean, and people are welcome, like welcome to disagree. I mean, there's strong arguments to be made for like the, the fermentation of, of hops and as like one of the reasons that humanity made it like yeah yeah like modern civilization as we know it like modern farming and like like centralized cities rather than just roaming you know tribes of people wandering wasn't around it, wasn't like, also like a really big part of like being able to uh make water consumable in an easier way than constantly boiling everything yeah i don't remember there's, there's something to do with that i don't know but like yeah. yeah, there's there's like there's like to be clear, I'm not down on it. I have absolutely no moral objection whatsoever nope. to consumption of alcohol. I don't care as long as you're not a danger to yourself or others. I'm not I I, I feel my my need to be involved is exactly zero. Yep. I just it's just not for me. Yeah, not for me either. Uh Flash728 says the disgusting taste makes your food taste better. Is that the whole pairings thing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Uh, love it. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to show you was this is a near final oh. screwdriver. Ooh. This is from the oh, there's ball sweat on it. Let me get that for you. I I just I had it. <laughs> little, well, it's not really like sweat. It's more like um, humidity. Sure. Yeah. Uh, nice. Anyway, see, he'll touch it. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> That ratchet is from the Chinese supplier that did not get acquired by a competitor and therefore is actually <laughs> willing to produce product for us. Uh, the plastics are all shot in the same material, unlike the one that I've been using for six months. The ratchet is not quite there. We're doing some work on the tolerances to make it a little bit quieter. The top will still swivel. And the reason for that is A, that's how the bit retention mechanism works, so that you can turn it to see all the different bits that are in it. And B, it allows you to use it a number of different ways. Yeah, I like so swivel tops. you can power drive like that. You can use it kind of like the you know the iFixit one, like if you're if you're down on something like this and you're turning it like that, or you can turn the ratchet with your fingers with the knurling. The knurling, I think we're also going to go a little bit deeper. Okay. The Taiwanese supplier had the knurling just right on on yeah. theirs. Um, but the Chinese supplier is still getting things figured out. One of the coolest things about the the switch to the new supplier is a the quality is way better, which is great, I guess, because um, Chinese tool manufacturers are not able to ship into the U.S. without tariffs right now, so they need oh. work. And because our screwdriver is going to have all the plastics shot and final assembly done in Canada. Even though the ratchet and shaft are going to be manufactured and assembled in China and then sent over here, enough of the manufacturing and assembly is done in Canada that it is now a Canadian-made screwdriver. Nice. So we are not subject to tariffs. So we can use 
a cool. high quality Chinese supplier that needs work and we can avoid the tariffs and be price competitive. And it's just going to be a really, really great tool. I'm That's awesome. I'm extremely excited. But can it play Crisis? Unfortunately, no. Sorry, no, not so much. It'll make a lot of things that can play Crisis, though. Uh, Nathan H. asks, how dirty do you let your laptop screen get before you have to clean it? So when I have milk splatter from like eating cereal in front of it that no longer wipes off, I, I have to go get water and I have to I have to clean it. That's my threshold. I mean, here, you tell me how how bad is this? It's pretty bad. I it's I, greasy. I've, I've yeah, I know it's 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 really bad. I've pointed this out before though, and you pointed out in a counterpoint that that gets particularly bad because it's always closed. Yeah, I open it only when I'm using it. It doesn't even get wiped by like sliding in and out of my pocket. Not even a little. So it does tend to get a little grody. Because I, I remember seeing quite a while ago your phone screen and I was like, wow, that's really grody. I'm not used to Linus's phone screen being really grody. Um, but yeah, it's because it doesn't get wiped constantly in and out of your yeah. pocket. How about you? Are what? you, are you, uh, here, give me your razor. Okay, we're going to shame him. We're going to publicly shame him. I'm expecting his keyboard to be disgusting and his screen to actually be relatively clean. Nailed it. <laughs> There's like actual crud in between the keys on a laptop keyboard. Look at this under the backspace. It's gross. And I've actually like cleaned it. I, for people that don't know, my hands just like leak. They constantly. like shoof it's, onto it, things. It's actually insane. It's very, un it's always annoying for, for uh, my current girlfriend and any other girlfriend that I've ever had because I hate holding hands mm. because my own hand will just... Any amount of added heat and then also not being exposed to the air is just going to make it just soak. And even if they don't care, I just hate it. When we oh went work goodness. from home, Luke just like left all his stuff here and nobody wanted to touch his keyboard to yeah, clean it up yeah. for him. And like the weird part is that keyboard on my laptop, I have actually cleaned like a lot of times. <laughs> and it just doesn't matter because it's going to immediately come back because I like, yeah, I don't know. Every once in a while when I'm sick, I'll have actually dry hands because it will stop. And I'm every single time it happens, I'm like, whoa, this is what it's like to be normal. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't know. It's annoying. John A. asks, uh, games keep getting bigger. Some are massive. M.2 storage keeps getting cheaper. Do you think we'll go back to a cartridge system with games pre-installed on M.2s that we insert NES style? No, I really don't think so. Because the other factor is that the internet keeps getting faster, and that's that's just going to be the way to deliver games, I'm afraid. Brian says, finally buying a shirt. Got the mouse pad as soon as it dropped. What are your cat's names, and are they as tech literate as you? Our cat's name is Dash. We only have one cat now. Um, pretty much every story about uh, why we only have one cat is sad, and I've definitely told it on the WAN show before, so I'm, I'm not going to revisit it right now, but yeah. yeah. Walter says... Have you seen the UFD Tech New Egg scandal? They didn't pay for video sponsorships. Yeah. I have not watched Ooh. it yet. I really need to. It's brutal. You're Sorry, I'm getting so away from far it. Away it's from very you, brutal. Damn it, Luke. You got to watch it. Come on, man. Yeah. Okay. You got to watch it, though. Okay. It's brutal. I'll watch it. I he know. Does a too I know you don't like watching full length videos. He does a too long, didn't watch thing at the very beginning of the video. Oh, maybe I'll just do that then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know Nick has watched it, and I think we're working on some kind of LTT store sponsorship for him or something like that. He actually does a positive call out in the video because the same thing, like LTT store and Newegg sponsored the same thing for him. Yeah. LTT store sent him twice the amount of merch stuff that they were originally agreed to. Yeah. Just for like funsies, I guess. And Newegg just like didn't pay him. Cool. And then tried to pay him hush money to like not talk about it. Amazing. What's the difference between repaying someone what you owe them and paying them hush money? I, I haven't watched the video, so was, I'm, I'm legit just asking. It was, uh, he, I, if I remember correctly, he was like trying to get it for a long time. Oh, man, I don't want to misquote. You should all just watch the video. It's really good. Um, I think what happened was he started being a little bit more public about it. And then they were like, hey, we'll give you like three times the amount if everything's cool now. It wasn't like we're actually going to fix it. It Got was it. three times the amount. And it was clearly only done because... He's a public figure. Got it. Which always feels bad because if, if they're going to take care of you just because you're a public figure, it's not okay. Well, it's like the, um, it's like the, the whole someone who is someone who's kind to you and rude to a waiter is a rude person. Yes. Like it's that yeah, simple. Exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, Justin K, with Nintendo's recent disregard for game preservation, will you be throwing caution to the wind and doing a Switch emulation comparison on the various handheld gaming PCs? Something, something. I am a pirate. Uh, right. Nice, nice privateer shirt, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I actually included Switch emulation uh, in my coverage of the ioneo 2021 pro i talked about i think i was using yuzu that's the that's the switch emulator i ended up using i think that the steam deck is going to be an excellent candidate for switch emulation i would strongly encourage you guys to do everything in your power to own a legal copy of games that you are going to play however you know you want to talk ethical piracy i think there's a strong argument to be made for playing breath of the wild on your desktop at 60 fps with your Breath of the Wild cartridge sitting carefully away in your closet somewhere and not being played at 30 stupid FPS because Nintendo can't be bothered to release that software on something powerful enough to actually run it. Like, I, 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 have, I have always said I think there is a lot of gray in this whole conversation. We and are not the arbiters of what you should and shouldn't do. I do intend to discuss switch emulation performance on the valve steam deck is the short answer to that okay. uh brandon g says love and appreciate all you guys do have you considered adding an archive page to the store to show all the products and iterations of them that you've ever released it's a cool idea um no i haven't thought of that i don't know that we would expend dev time on it since it has I'm, I'm going to get into really boring really boring crappy stupid business talk with you right now but there's no roi on that yeah I literally can't sell it to you, so why am I even doing that? Um, if we had absolutely nothing else to do, sure. But even then, probably not. We'd probably work on like a really funny April Fool's joke or something like that. It would maybe, because we're not like getting rid of all that information. So it would be, maybe be more uh, interesting Sorry, to have like a, a blog newsletter thing that goes out like a bunch of years from now. Going like, a look at 10 years ago versus now. A look at five years ago versus now, whatever. Uh, we've looked into UV Reactive Inc. We have not had a ton of success with it, so we are not going to release anything that we can't stand behind. Alexander J, how did you like using an LED wall screen during the deal or no deal show thing, PC or no PC, a while back? Do you plan on any more stage style shows? We've had so many production challenges with those yeah. that we just, I don't think, uh, Bell, we, we don't have anything like that in the pipe right now, do we? I'm getting a, I'm getting a, one of these right now. So nothing nothing for the time being. Any plans for more BTS? Asks Patrick S. Like 17 videos in one week and tech linked make a video in one day thing. As someone in that industry, it's been some of my favorite content. Also would love more designs in the app. And it ended there. Um, any plans for more BTS? Honestly, the BTS videos that we've done have mostly been because we had a sponsor that was really like workflow focused and, you know, wanted something that would go along with their thing. And we couldn't really come up with any other idea. It's not because those are our favorite videos to produce. It's just something that we know that there are people who enjoy. And so we wanted to kind of try to find all the synergies and put them together. Again, it's more like boring business stuff. Luke, have you tried Lost Ark yet? Uh, I have the if I, my like super quick review would be that the story is very skip worthy. Mm -hmm. The mechanics and gameplay is very fun and it is extremely pay to win. And if you think it's not, you're wrong. OK, cool. Roberto asks, do you have any plans on making an LTT lunch bag to go with the backpack and water bottle? Are you in my brain? Of course. Dude, I've been wondering you guys should do like more pirate themed stuff because you have a banana and now you have a pirate shirt. Like I feel like I don't I can't think of what we do it not would have be, a pirate though. shirt. We have a privateer shirt. We do, and you have a privateering banana. We have a banana. I don't know if it's a privateering <laughs> banana, but we certainly have a banana. I don't know. It's honestly not something I want to lean into that heavy. I don't know if you noticed, but I haven't even addressed any of what happened on the show today. I it's just for me the whole thing has just been kind of like okay. Pretty much everyone has moved on. There's a very, very, very small number of people who are still very, 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 however it is that they feel about it. And okay. Yeah. I've said everything that I could possibly say about it at this point. So here's a shirt, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, oh, Tau T says, Arr, you've privateered me dollars, you hearties. Or me hearties, I don't know, whatever. I don't have a very good pirate voice. <laughs> Real question. Will Elm, do you ever consider making a tech tip wiki, kind of like how Lewis is doing with the repair stuff? Um, would you support a well-made community effort converting and summarizing videos to wiki format? Uh, that's one of the things I would like the lab to tackle. Uh, uh, John, our tech wiki writer, actually had the idea of doing like a tech dictionary, a tectionary. And I was like, wait, like physical? He's like, yeah, it would be like, it'd be like kind of cool. We could bind it really nicely. I was like, John, we're not doing, we're not <laughs> printing a dictionary. It's the year is not 1983. Um, the first tip in the dictionary would be that you should look up things online. Yeah. And like trees, man, come on. <laughs> yeah. um, love you, John. Um, but what I, what that actually got my brain thinking about was, Hey, maybe that should be part of LTT labs. Is this just quick and dirty? Hey, what is that? I need to know. I don't even have time to watch a video for like three minutes. Uh, ab absolutely, I could see that being something that we would pursue. Jake says, love the show. First time catching live. Any plans for pet merch? Okay, why don't you do some stuff? I'm going to go see if I can find something. Okay. <laughs> um, water cooling stream deck win. Oh, it's a matter of time. Yeah. Someone will probably beat us to it, though. We're so slow now. If you guys couldn't hear that, he said someone will probably beat us to it, though. We're so slow now. Um, there's a lot of questions in here that are very specifically for Linus. Like, is there a framework update and stuff? So I'm trying to skip through things and find some find some me stuff. Um, there's one that said my name, and then it flew away. Here it is. James R. said, Luke, what is your job title? COO. Uh, and what would someone have to do in school to get a job like yours? I have no idea. Uh, um, I don't know, dude. I do a lot of weird stuff. I'm kind of all over the map, so I don't think there is one thing um, that you could go to school for that would cover my... I'm not saying, like, I'm so smart that it's impossible. I just do a weird range of stuff, and the stuff that I do covers a lot of different sections just because of like what Linus was talking about earlier. I've just worked here for a really long time. So I have experience on a lot of things that we very specifically do. And I can do a lot of those things. So there's not like a degree that's like, this is how you work at Linus Media Group or Floatplane or Creative Warehouse or whatever. Um, I just, I don't know. Getting into software is a really good idea. <laughs> Computer science, software engineering. I, I originally took software engineering. Um, and then got into this, but now the majority, almost everything that I do doesn't directly have to do with software engineering. So I don't know, dude, ha having done that degree does help me though, because when I'm talking to the developers and stuff that I oversee, I can actually generally understand what they're dealing with, what problems they're having, those types of things. So I don't know, dude. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm a fabricator looking to change careers and your job sounds like the most interesting slash satisfying. Thanks. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that helps, but yeah, getting into software is a solid idea. Um, you have to constantly deal with very mentally aggravating problems. Um, it's, it's a challenging job for a perfectionist because there is always things that are changing, especially if you do stuff like web development. Uh, there are always things that are changing that are outside of your control that are going to impact the thing that you made and potentially make it worse or buggy or, or whatever. So it is it is constant and it can be grueling, but it can pay really well. And there's really good job security because like everyone's hiring. So that's what I'd say. Hmm. I don't remember where my wallet is. So that's um, probably a problem. That's but... unfortunate. Uh, yeah, so I think I have a solution to this. I need a little. I need you to stall for me for a little bit, though. Sure. Can I ask you questions? Absolutely. Okay. How is everything going with framework? There hasn't been an update in a while. Uh, well, I'm not at liberty to share That's um, everything that's going down with framework. So uh, the problem for me is that okay, I don't know anything that any other investor wouldn't, but because. I've like had conversations with them and I don't know what's confidential and, and, and what's not. I've found that for my part, it feels like the best thing to do is just kind of keep my mouth shut. Um, I was considering doing like a longer term review now that I've been daily driving the framework. And basically the title is pretty simple. Did I make a mistake? 
uh, would be would be what I would go with for the title. And I'll talk about some of the things that have been really great about my framework laptop and some of the things that have been honestly not as great about my framework laptop. I mean, part of the way that I see my role as an investor in framework is um, as being able to give me, objective. right? Like yeah. I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm there to add credibility, but I can only add credibility if I'm still able to criticize it. So in a way it's kind of like being the coach's son, like it ain't an advantage kids. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of how I'm, that's kind of how I'm looking at it right now. I just don't have too much to say that I hadn't said before. So that's a little tough. Nothing right now. There's another question from Jordan S. Yeah. Uh, it says, hi, Linus squared. I'm a mechanic, or hi, L squared, I should say. So I guess he means oh, both of us. Yeah. I'm a mechanical design engineer, and I love the newsletter. How did the issue with the magnets in the kids build a PC toy turn out? Oh, we are working on a different product that is going to require an enormous, absolutely immense volume of neodymium and, and uh, magnet purchases. So we are at a price break now where we can actually get custom shaped magnets made oh. that we can embed in the wood in a way that is I, that I would I would trust my life to. I would trust my child's life that that magnet is never coming out of that piece. However, that project that has the much greater potential for volume has sidelined the kids first PC oh, okay. project for the time being. It's it's if anything, it's more hopeful than ever before. It's going to be an insanely expensive toy. Neodymium, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to this. It's like 5 x in price in, in recent times. And that, that kid's first PC toy is going to have like 50 or 60 freaking magnets in it. Like it's ridiculous. The, the cost of neodymium alone in that stupid toy is going to be dozens of dollars. So it's going to be really expensive. Um, but it's also, I think, going to be one of those things that even if we just did it as a as a limited run item, you know, one time, okay, yeah, we're going to make this thing. I think it could be the sort of thing that is like actually a collectible. So there's an argument to be made for for picking one up when we when we finally do it, but it's not going to be soon. All right, I'm ready. Luke, hold on. Don't look. Okay. Don't look. Okay. Okay. I think I've seen this though. Have you? I think so. Okay. Meet the wag hoodie. Yeah. 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 So awesome. Uh, this That's is so cool. This is Bridget's dog. <laughs> uh, why is the, why is the photo viewer in Windows so bad? Always has. It's been. amazing. It's it's actually shocking. Well, no, in Windows Seven it was fine actually. That's fair. There it is. The wag hoodie. So sweet. So cute. Yes, that's a real zipper. Yes, it actually functions. Yes, our supplier told us we were crazy. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you like, okay, here. Hypothetically, dogs are a great way to pick someone up, right? So you might need somewhere to keep a condom. Hey. Yeah. You don't want it to just be like in your or pocket. Doggy bags. Yeah, because that could be awkward, right? You just, just have spare doggy bags. <laughs> just okay, guys. I'm obviously to be more on the serious side. Of I'm obviously reaching here, but yeah, that that's that's genius. Yeah, for sure. You could put your your little doggy poo pickup bags in there or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure chat is exploding. Oh yeah. No, no, that. I shall own this. Uh, yeah, you will. Yeah, I have to get one for my parents' dog. Yeah, you will. No question. We will sell it, guys. It, it's it's going to happen. Uh, I think it was Bridget who pitched this. I'm not sure, but it was one of those things where every once, every once in a while we'll have a conversation where she like goes into a thing and she's like, "Okay, hear me out. I think we should do. I think we should do this." And I'm like, "Yes." And she's like, "Here are the reasons. I think that between the cost, I'm like, we're doing it." And she's like, "Right, but don't you want to listen?" I'm like. No, <laughs> it, no disrespect. I don't mean to be rude, but nothing that you could say could possibly change this outcome. You want it to happen. I'm more on board than you, I think. <laughs> Let's go. Let's freaking go. Part of the idea of like, 
hiring people that are better than you at the thing that you want them to do is like they should be better than you so if it's if they if they truly believe in the call that they're making yeah and i will ask a lot it. of questions yeah for sure i will ask make a sure ton that of they've questions. gone through everything all that kind of stuff one of the things we're working on right now is that i don't like wearing sunblock and i don't like getting burned but i am white as the driven snow and i spend most of my time inside so whenever i do go outside i get burned in like i can literally get a sunburn in like eight minutes if it's if it's like a really hot like high uv index day or whatever and so one of the things that i want because i will often wear a hoodie outside because i hate wearing sunblock it makes my skin all greasy and i break out i just really don't like it so one of the things i'll do is i'll just i'll just sweat buckets i'll just i'll just like carry a water bottle i'll chug water and i'll just sweat in a hoodie and stay out of the sun that way and so uh, one of the things i wanted to do was a super super lightweight but full coverage super breathable but sun blocking garment and it turns out there's a whole industry of like sun blocking fabrics and i'm like oh okay cool yeah, yeah. so bridget and i were going back and forth back and forth on really these three different fabrics one was more like a it reminds me of like i don't want to say it reminds me of burlap because it's obviously a lot better than that. We would never release a burlap hoodie. Unless the you want The new LTT burlap sack. <laughs> yeah, the burlap sack. Yeah. I mean, that's, I'm kind of tempted to I'm do that. I'm kind of tempted. <laughs> okay, hold on. There's going to be like a few random jokers at LTX 2023 that show up in burlap sacks. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Okay, hold on. I need a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, so it, it, but it reminds me of that in terms of its breathability. Like it's a really, really loose mesh and it's a little heavier and you actually want a little bit of weight to it. Like there's a reason that in the Middle East, you know, in Central America, they wear heavier, heavy fabrics to keep, to keep the heat of the sun off of them. Right. So, so it had a bit of a bit more of that weight to it while still being kind of a modern feeling, you know, hoodie garment. And then she had one that had a much tighter weave, uh, had a higher quantity of bamboo, which is a really nice cooling uh, material and had more stretch to it. And she was like, yeah, I really feel this will be like a nicer garment. And I was like, the problem though, is that I almost feel like if we were doing a women's garment, that one might be more appropriate. But for me as a sweaty boy, I want whatever has the biggest holes in it. So every possible breeze that comes by is going to benefit me as much as possible. And I feel like you and I are having like a Mars and Venus conversation here where we're just coming at this from totally different perspectives. Yeah, and I want feel different like products basically. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like we want very different products. So we brought in, we brought in Nick to sort of as a, Hey, am I crazy? Neither of us told him what, what were our preferences. And he immediately gravitated to mine and was like, I'm going to need the airflow and this isn't going to cling to me when I sweat like a mother trucker. Right. And I'm like, yeah, bingo. And like, you can, you can just tell when someone, when someone considers, you know, how a garment is going to look on them when they're drenched in sweat versus someone who just doesn't spend their life or like three months out of the year drenched in sweat. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, so that was just an example of something where, you know, I ended up asking a lot of questions, um, it's not that necessarily it's as simple as, you know, you hire people that are better than you because it's when you put two people in a room, even if one of them is better than the other, that doesn't necessarily make the better person's idea the best one by default. I feel like we end up with our best products when we have a ton of conversation. Yeah, you're going for it. a different thing and you brought different experience to the table. Yeah. Um, uh, I have about? questions about labs. We were, we were talking about uh, uh, the, the WAG hoodie. Uh, but I have questions about labs. You do? Well, no. Oh. Adam B. and Urban Forever does. Okay. Um, Adam B. says, I was wondering if for LTT labs, you might consider finding a way to measure slash report the exact output of headphones slash speakers. That way you can take out the human element, i.e. I like bass in my audio. Therefore, I like these headphones. Uh, absolutely. I believe we have a higher Part sorted out for that already. I forget their start date, but we will be ready to announce that as soon as their probation's up. Cool. Another one, Urban Forever says, how will content for the LTT Lab work? Will it have its own channel or go up on the main channel? For starters, I think the lab is going to focus on written for its own content. And then 
um, supporting our other content. I expect shorts, every short circuit to have hit the lab first once it's in full swing. And then in the longer term, I think what we're going to find is that short circuit is going to run out of uh, stuff that's interesting enough to cover as it continues to grow and have sort of a higher threshold of viewership that it expects per video. And either what will happen is we'll fragment it out into other circuits or we will uh, completely rebrand or we will create a lab channel that we just don't even worry about any kind of like upload frequency optimization. And we just have way more basic, less opinionated videos uh, that are just... Here is everything you need to know about it in video form if for whatever reason you prefer to watch a video compared to reading an article. Yeah. Uh, Owen A asks, has the knowledge you learned uh, has, has the knowledge you learned at NCX carried over to LTT Nerch? Um, Nerch. Specifically the distribution, distribution knowledge. knowledge yeah. I would say I definitely I definitely learned a lot theoretically about distribution at NCIX, but I Again, that's school of hard knocks, right? Like I didn't learn anything I didn't need to know in order to do my job better. So I'm not an expert in like, you know, what the best brand of conveyor for your warehouse is or anything like that. I don't care about that. But I would say that it's carried over in terms of relationships because the guy that runs our fulfillment yeah. warehouse actually was the warehouse manager for NCIX Richmond. Um, so that relationship was forged in the fires of NCIX and it continues to benefit both of us today. Uh, Austin D says, how important do you think upscaling techniques like DLSS, FSR, XESS will be for the future of graphics rendering as games get increasingly harder to run? I think it's pretty darn important. I think it's mostly important for a specific type of customer. I think it's very important for people that don't want to upgrade their computers as often because yep. for a long time we went through this path where you'd you'd buy a new system and you could run things on high or ultra or whatever. And then as time went on, the new games, you'd start bringing it down, bring it down, bring it down. Um, and that's all fine and dandy and you can still do that. But now it keeps going because you can bring it down further with these tools in a way that it, the, the fidelity is still there um, in a lot of the same ways, which is very cool. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's quite important. Michael W. asks, you've talked about your time at NCIX and how LMG began. Would you mind talking about how you got started at NCIX? I started out as a customer. I was super annoying, man. Like whenever I had uh, like a, a part that I needed to RMA or whatever, a lot of the time I wouldn't be sure because you don't have just like a whole set of other hardware to plug it into and figure out like start troubleshooting what the problem is. So I actually managed to sweet talk my way into the RMA room at both the Burnaby and Vancouver locations on multiple occasions <laughs> uh, and just ask, hey, can I have some like space on the test bench so that I can diagnose this motherboard? Can I have like your test CPU and your test RAM? Uh, and then can I put like this different motherboard in my system? And then if the other one worked and solved my problem, then I would buy it. I was a regular enough, I knew everyone. I was like first name basis with everyone. Uh, and then how I actually got my job there was that I was a very active participant on their forum. I had some fire. Uh, I have always had a little bit of fire. <laughs> I, I, I sent Luke some really funny threads that I have participated in. I, I have allowed myself um, and I, I really... I took a long break from this, but I have allowed myself as part of this whole privateer thing that has gone over the last little bit to kind of cut loose a little bit. And it's been sort of liberating <laughs> because uh, I, I just I've tried to be I've tried to be really professional in my communication about a lot of things over the years because. I just ha I, I have it seems like something that I should do. And this is one of those things where I'm just kind of sitting here going. Uh, who cares, you know? And there's a lot of reasons for me to sit and go, who cares? Uh, one of them is that it just doesn't matter. Um, it's a semantic argument, and it's just really silly that it's managed to drag on for so long, uh, especially after I already said, yes, semantically, technically, what I said was incorrect. Um, but also, like, you, I'm giving an inch. Where's your inch? Um, Functionally, they really are very similar. Yeah. Uh, and and there, there's no inch. So I'm just like, yeah, well, if it's something I can't win anyway, I might as well have some fun. And there's also the element of who am I bothering with this whole conversation? Literally, the only people I could be upsetting with this whole thing <laughs> 
It's like being a shoplifter and uh, boycotting the store. I don't care. <laughs> what, what, what can you do to me? Nothing. I never really thought about that angle, but that's pretty funny. It's hilarious. Yeah. So I've allowed myself to get a little more combative with people about it than I have in the past because it's just like it's just ridiculous. And so, um, yeah, back in the day, I had some I had some fire. I got into my fair share of AMD versus Intel arguments because it's amazing how high tempers get when the stakes are are at their lowest. Well, but, uh, Do you know what I mean? Because it doesn't matter. Why am I arguing with someone about how no. they spend their money? We, we've talked about this before. Who cares? People people get really, really amped up by defending their own purchasing decisions because they feel yes. like their purchasing decisions are their identity. So That's fair. That's fair. To, to some people, the stakes will be high because their they're personal attacks now. Is, you made fun of Intel? Well, I sided with Intel. That means you're making fun of me. <laughs> Like, okay, <laughs> relax. So uh, anyway, I was a very active participant on the forum. And, um, you know, when I did argue with people, I really, I, I genuinely came from a good place. I wanted them to understand a viewpoint that at least to, to the best of my ability was objective and in their best interest. And so hiring me was a very controversial decision there. I know that for a fact because they told me much later after it had like worked out uh, that, they, that there was a lot of internal debate about hiring this like kind of pushy kid on the forum. <laughs> um, but I guess if I had to say how it began, I would say by participating, by being a member of a community, right? Um, you know, I, I, I just cared a lot. And I don't think that's ever changed. Yeah. Last merch message. Chris says, does the backpack have some structure that keeps it from going flaccid and droopy when it's mostly empty, except for something heavy in the front pocket? It would be awesome if it kept a lie profile in that scenario. Okay. Uh, now, do you, by front pocket, do you mean this one? Because I've got, this is the latest revision of the backpack here. I don't know that I could put anything that heavy in the front pocket. I mean, I could put this... Here, I guess I could stuff this capture card in there. Oh, uh, something fell out. Yeah, I, I will. I will get it. I yeah. will get it. So here, I will. I will jam this capture card and like cable and stuff in there. It's really this pocket's really not um, designed. I think for that's. A, I think that's a yeah of bag use. of holding main pocket. Item, yeah, but... it definitely is. Um, okay, now I will strip everything else out of the backpack. So I got my. Oh my goodness. Oh, I've got proto new prototype underwear. I don't look at too closely at that. Oh man. Okay, I'm dropping a lot of stuff here. Crap. Sorry, I've just I'm I'm committed to answering. Hey, very nice, Matthew R. Picked up the worst value item on the store, the expensive edition CPU pillow. Love it. I mean, if you're gonna flex, you might as well flex hard. Ah. Pull out the framework. Framework charger. Well, it's an Asus charger. I didn't get a charger with my framework because I didn't need one. Neat, right? Okay. Sorry, guys. This is taking a bit. I like actually store stuff in it because I'm oh, actually good. using it. Okay. Seems like it. It's completely empty other than the front pocket there. Are you handing it to me? No, you're just demonstrating no, I'm just, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just showing. It's it's like actually a really really great material. <laughs> the the team did an amazing job. So there you go. Yeah, I was going to say we have shown it on the show a lot of times. So you'll yeah. be able to see how it's held its structure that whole time and it's always been very it's always kind of been the same. Keeps feel like you probably could have just said yes. That's fair enough. But Demonstrating it's good, I wanted though. to demo it. I have 30,000 of these inbound. I need to sell them. Yeah. So <laughs> if, if I don't show you guys why I bought 30,000 of them, why will you buy one? Right? <laughs> All right. I think that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye.
I never know quite when to turn it off because like the YouTube preview still has like right there's, there's yeah. a bit of a and delay. everything just stops the immediate second you turn it off I think off. it does I'm not yeah. sure I'm, okay, I'm gonna kill it 